Good, doing good. My computer's running a Sorry, little slow. Kind of <laughs> Wait, I might have to reboot. How you been doing? Doing really good, man. I've been uh been in the trenches building things out and um pretty excited, man. I'm gonna be doing all day today, all day tomorrow. Just launching launching the program, getting the rest of it out. And I, I uh, caught the replay um where you started showing some highlights the other day of what you've been working on. I know it takes a lot of time. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's uh definitely does. <laughs> I, I can relate. I've been doing the same, um, um, building out my, or attempting to build out my first course. So, um, uh, you know, first time it's, uh, it's a lot of work. It is, it is. And I, you know, I don't, I don't know how many courses this is now, but, um, it, uh, it's one of them things like you have to keep in mind that, just because you have more stuff in the bag doesn't mean that the bag's more valuable. Exactly. And, you know, it's really keeping a hold of the less is more mentality and, you know, lean, mean, and scrappy. And if you want a really good course, a really good program, you want to essentially have some set of like a beta, right? Like you want to come out like the first build lab that I put out, you know, the beta, I didn't put hardly anything in there. Uh, mainly because it has in there what needs to be in there to get you up and going. Um, and, and, and it's scarce, but it was about getting feedback and hearing the, hearing the people go, well, what about this? Or where's this? Or you didn't add this to it. Or well, I wish we could have some more of this. Or that's exactly what you want. Because I used to create the first course I ever created. I went super crazy. It was like 50 something hours long. It was nine, uh, nine modules. Each module had like five to 10 videos in it. I had every single like resource I could come up with. I had all this stuff and then people were just drudging to get through it. And it was just info overload. And then I learned through that to, you know, come back and let the, let the community, let the people tell you like what needs to be in it and then create kind of like a standard operating procedure. Like it, you, you, it's, you want, pe that's why it's so important when you do an online program to have this call right here, because no matter what anybody says about the course, um, you can get on live with me four hours a week if you want, and we can go yeah. over anything that you want to go over. And I know that the other programs don't offer that because I've been in those other programs and I do the very, very few actually do what I'm doing right now. Um, and it's, it's such a powerful thing, but even more than that, it's allowing you to really learn about what your people actually want and need. And that's where you can create a, a course that actually will, will withstand time and, and matter and actually help people. And it's just a process. It takes time. And, you know, there's really, uh, the online course is just part of the offer stack and it just, it just takes time. I mean, it takes, you know, ultimately to build a real powerful, like sustainable, you know, like business that you can really depend on and know that it's going to do great. I mean, it takes years, you know, um, there's no quick question for you on that front. So I know there's a lot of different strategies and philosophies and, and, Really, it may be boiled down to, you know, there's not a right or a wrong answer because they could all be, you know, successful and functional in regards to this is what I'm at least initially considering. So I've got my book that I'm going to use as a, a low cost entry, right? Um, an ebook. And then an upsell option to, you know, add or get videos that go along with it. But it's, that's not where the money's at, right? That's, that's low cost. And then in terms of the course, here yeah, I can see the, uh, already can see the uh, information overload and not to, you know, go down that path. Because one thing I've picked up is people that are, that are signing up for this, whatever the course may be about is, you know, we talk about current state, desired state, you know, I hear this. Uh, you probably know Sunny. She does the zero to hero mm -hmm. 
um, they just want to get to that end state as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. right? That's all they care about. So the information overload can actually prevent them from that occurring and cause people to get frustrated. So I think that's really important to always keep in mind. So in the course development, uh, I just want to get your two cents on this. In terms of having a, uh, I know some people call it a mini course, you know, something that's less robust, but it has also a, a lower price point of entry. And then having a higher price course that has, I guess, two components to it. One, it's got more information. And two, it adds in the coaching aspect like you're doing, you know, that's, a, we'll call it a premium course. What are your thoughts about a, a multi-tiered um, business model that's built around that? Can you see my screen? Uh, it's coming up. Yep. There we go. So ultimately, like what I'm building out and what I've learned over the years, I mean, I've, I've been to a lot of the masterminds and, you know, I've met just about all the people you probably, probably listen to. I mean, I've been to Brendan Burchard's, you know, Experts Academy VIP membership. You know, I've sat down and actually had a like face-to-face -face, in-person conversation with him, you know, Grant Cardone, Frank Kern, um, you know, I've spent tons of money on all these things. Right. And right. what I found is all of them, all of them have these these things right here and it and it builds out like i said it builds it, it's not something that happens right away right but you eventually build towards this and you know i used to want to have this like huge like you know multi-million dollar per month business and all this stuff and what i've actually learned is it in this space, if you're wanting to be an online, let's say in the e-learning business, you know, like what selling digital products, programs, coaching, things like that, masterminds. Um, I found that, and, and, and I've had some people really like go through this and depending on what you want, of course, always, but having a business that operates in the like two to 3 million a year space, and then, you know, having that being extremely sustainable, which is unreal money, you know, like in our business, oh, yeah. with, when you have 90 plus percent profit margins, um, I mean, I can tell you because I'm doing it every day, you can, you can make two to three million a year doing this with zero employees and not be overloaded. Okay. So, um, having it at that stage where it's very sustainable, you're not pulling your hair out and, and creating these, these offers like this, um, this is really the stages that it goes through. Now, initially you, when you really do this um, and you're wanting to build long-term, your first offer typically needs to be right here. And this is scary for a lot of people because of the high ticket aspect of it. But when I first got started, um, I, I, I didn't even know really what to do. So I just did whatever they told me to do and I hoped it worked out and, <laughs> All right. and it did. And I, I started charging immediately. I started charging $5,800, uh, for a program. And I was like, who in the hell is going to pay me for this? Like who in the hell can even afford this? Cause my mind was so, I couldn't, I couldn't even, you know, at that time think of paying that much for something, right? Like that was, a lot of money to me. And I realized that it wasn't a lot of money to some people and to the people that I could actually help. And I'm like, well, I don't even have a lot of customers. I don't even have a lot of people that I can prove that I've done this for other than just a couple. And I was like, how, how can I do this? So I, I started justifying my value, not in terms of necessarily like, here's all these people that I've helped, but that's where I got into this place where I just said, here is what I actually do. Here's the actual process. And I wasn't scared of them stealing it from me because um, I was like, well, you know, regardless if somebody just took all this information, they're still going to need support. They're still going to need a blueprint. They're still going to need this stuff. And I started offering this high end offer right away. And I did more of a one to one, which I still do. I still have a $9,800 one time investment. Um, that I charge for one-to-one -one coaching. 
And what it does though, is it's really profitable. So you only need, you know, when you're selling something for like my $9,800 offer, you know, just selling like five or six of those a month, I'm working with five or six people and that's 50, 60 grand essentially. Right. And so that really powers up the rest of these other offers. And it really makes you, you know, I'm working with people that make a, a lot of money. Like they're very, they're in, in, I mean, essentially they're, to me, I look up to them. I'm like, you know, some of my clients make 20, 30 million a month. And it's wow. like, yeah. And so talking to them, I'm like, and they're in very boring businesses, by the way, it's not like, you know, these fancy things. And, and what it does though, is it, it, uh, it keeps you sharp. You can, you can really do some neat things. This offer typically, you know, really needs to be, and all of your offers can be recurring, but when you're doing what you're doing, so many people go, well, I'm going to start typically here's where people start is right here, or they'll start right here because they'll see other people doing this like myself, or they'll see others and they're going, oh, that's the way to do it. You know, it's more affordable. People can pay that, you know, I can get some sales, but what happens is you put yourself into a hamster wheel and you start to, you really just put yourself in, you're just doing it backwards. And so what you do is um, it's so hard to, it's so hard to, to, to get ahead when you're, when you're charging this much and you have zero audience or you have zero marketing uh, understanding because it takes so much effort and energy to do it that by the time you actually do it, you've put yourself into this expectation role of your audience and thing. It's just terrible, honestly. So, but it's not a complete necessary. This is where, you know, this is build lab right here. Okay. Build lab is about a thousand bucks. It's, it's going to be now a recurring model. Okay. You can't get it as a one time. And this is really where I think most people need to start, but they need to be like playing with this offer over here just because it's just getting one of those a month helps you so much. Right. And, and then what happens with your pillar offer, okay. Where you're, you're getting this, you know, at least a thousand, you know, I'd like to see it closer to like 3000 and you really, really make this the driver of the company. It's like the core offer. And then you peel off things from this offer to create these other offers. And this is where things really start to happen, right? So the community offer, this is something that can be recurring or it can be um, you know, a one-time and it's a lower ticket, but this gets people into your community and this essentially starts to pay for like your, your leads and stuff. The immunity offer is like kind of, this is like kind of the last offer that you create. Now, listen, I know people that sell $10 things and make 20 grand a month. Okay. So don't let me be the one to tell you what's possible or what, what you can or can't do because everybody can, it's it, what you do and what you're, ambition and everything. I'm just giving you the, the average. I'm just giving you the, what usually happens in nature. Okay. There's always anomalies, but this offer here, um, you know, it works really good. It, I see this one really hard to get past 397 unless it's like really intensive and then it starts to become this one. So this offer just, ends up paying your bills. It gets people, most people will then come in from this and go to this and then they'll go, or sometimes they'll jump from that to this. And I've even found people from this that come into here, but you, these build out over years, right? This one right here, just this one right here, you can, you can get to seven figures. Okay. And for most people, that's all they ever need right? For most people, one offer, one funnel, and I mean one offer, okay? Not a book that scales up, to scales up, that moves up. What happens there is it's, it's so, it, it becomes a distraction. And I know Russell Brunson and all these people, the book funnels, and again, all of that stuff works. 
But for most people, if they want something that's not going to make them stressed out, not going to require a ton of, you know, input to make it work, you just need one core offer that you charge honestly, like 3K to say 6K is like a sweet spot. It typically takes a phone call and you offer uh, weekly, you know, weekly lives like we're on right now. You give them a community, okay, if they have questions, and then they get a course that just stays updated in a particular zone. This right here, if you focus on it and you don't get distracted and you don't, because it sounds real good. Oh, I got this little low ticket offer. They'll come in. That will introduce them to me, and then I can upsell them, and then I can offer another upsell, and then I can do this. And it, it's, it's, I'm telling you, I've done this and helped so many people with, through this stuff. It, 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 it becomes a real headache, um, and it, and it doesn't. It takes a lot of power, a lot of advertising, um, and it can get pretty, it can get pretty intense. So. You know, you talk about bring. I'm not against what you're doing. Listen, I think I think you need to, I think you need to play it out. You know, because you've probably gotten so far with it or whatever. But you really need to. Do you have a high ticket? I, I that's what I'm building uh, towards is the high ticket, and I've shifted my my strategy because when I started, I didn't have the the course or the framework nor how to really, you know, build it. I've, I've come a long way since then. So my initial strategy was to follow your plan with a with the sale of, of uh, an ebook and video course. What I've done now is shift my, my strategy to say, because I had a free, you know, the cheese to get them into the funnel to, you know, build the email list, then to market them to sell the book. Well, that I don't think that's the right way to go. So what I'm going to do instead of the free book, I'm going to have a look. I think people see more value when they charge when you charge for something, even if it's a low amount, you know, under twenty dollars. And that's my cheese to get build the email list to sell the course to them. That's my strategy now. Yeah. Um. I mean, from my heart, and you know, not to like blast you or anything, but. No, go for it. I mean, that's what I'm here for is to learn. I, I, I really, really am, you know, I'm really bullish on, on a free offer to then, and then work them through. Cause here's what happens. Okay. Here, here's what happens. And I know it, it seems there's so the problem, there's so much like opposing opinions and like so many things out there. And the problem is, is you don't know what those people have been through, where they've, you know, like what they've experienced. But I can tell you this right now. And I, I can tell you this, like I've spent, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on ads. I mean, at, at one point we were doing like five to 7,000 a day on, on ads. And I've been in like a lot of different industries with this. And then with clients on top of it, if you have two scenarios here, okay. Here's what, here's the difference. If you're, you know, we'll, we'll just call this traffic. It doesn't matter what kind of traffic it is. If you send traffic to a paid offer here, even low ticket paid, and then you send traffic to a, like a free, a free training. Okay. You know, VSL offer amplifier, whatever you, I call it an offer amplifier video, uh, just because that language for whatever reason helps people more. I used to, I, I call it a VSL all the time. I mean, essentially that's what it is, but people get, I don't know, it messes with their head, but let's just, we'll call it a VSL for the sake of, of what culture calls it right now. This free video with basically value up front and then offer in the back and then going to the paid afterwards the this scenario here will convert people that visit it okay new people fresh people cold, converting cold traffic into leads and sales is the that's the 
that is the skill that you want to be able to master. I think we lost him here. He'll probably bounce in. He said he was having some tech issues. How's it going, Mike? Good, man. How you doing? Good, good. Okay, there he is. Okay. You bet. Can you hear me okay? Can you still see the screen and everything, Robert? Yeah, you're you're muted. You're still muted. There we go. Seems like you're it was weird. I got kicked out for a minute. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, okay, so you can see the screen. Yeah. So here's the difference. This on average, done right, this will convert cold traffic at one to five percent. And these this this thing that I used to always like push real hard on social media. 2% mm -hmm. of the people that come into your funnel will buy right away, right? So maybe like in the middle here, you know, 30%, and these are just vague percentages, right? It's like, <laughs> they're just never going to buy. And so this, this other 68% or whatever, they'll buy after they've been warmed up, essentially, or after, you know, follow up. Okay. So if you're sending a hundred people, you get a hundred people to come visit your page. And the only way they can become a um, part of your world is by, by buying something first, y you'd have to be a superstar to really hit this. Um, but you're going to convert like one, you know, okay. You're going to convert 10 to 50 or not even that sorry one to five people onto your list okay when you're doing traffic if somebody clicks on whether it's organic or paid if somebody clicks on your stuff it's not because they're bored it's because there's something more there that they're after and it's probably it's probably the right person and they probably live right here but while you're getting one to five people on your list that then that then convert at some point, let's say at 2% versus me, you know, mine right now is like, I'm, I'm above 40%, but I don't want to keep that as like a number, but I'm, while you're getting one to five people on your list per day, let's say I'm getting 20 to 40 and then they go buy the same if they were to if we were selling the same price thing i'm getting an average from this you're getting an average from this each day and these people you you, you know getting people on your email list and 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 again it's not like I, I have so many people like oh i went out and bought an email list man you know and it's not about that right it's about building it. It's like getting people on that. Those 20 to 40% get on my email list because I scared away the other percentage of people because of what I was offering. I didn't want them on the list. They didn't want to be on the list because of what that I was offering. So again, here's what's the problem. This does work, but it doesn't work as good as this for the time spent. So if I'm going to, if I'm going to, you know, put in effort, I want to get high output. What a lot of people do is they put in high out, they put in high input and they get low output. And over the course of time, it, it it's like it just never, it just never can get up. Whereas the other one, it it, it it's a constant, it goes like this. And it it just destroys. 
Now, here's the problem. You'll see people doing this low ticket up front, but they've already got, you know, hundreds of thousands of people on their email list. Mm. Then you can go run a, a small front end offer or, or they're using massive ad budgets. And even then it's still not the best strategy. And so that's why we have lead magnets and funnels because the, the, the mind there's no here. The problem here is there's no value being delivered before the ask. So your percentage of close is so much lower, right? So you're out here having to do heavy, 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 heavy value um, out in the social media realm. And it, be, it starts, it'll, it'll degrade and become sloppy because how much like stuff can you come up with? prior to even getting the money, you, it just ends up the law of diminishing returns hits you so much faster and it burns you out and it, it, it becomes just a, a loss, a loss game. Right now, if you do like a, you know, even some people are like, well, the free plus shipping. Yeah, it, it can, these numbers can be okay, but I, I'll tell you, man, if my family was was held at ransom and I had to get them, oh, I had to get them free. This would be completely out of the story. I will I will make way more down here, offering something free, educating them, you know, really showing them what things are about, getting them onto a list and and nurturing them. And and following up with them and bringing them into my world, you'll close, you'll you'll destroy everyone else that's against you in the same race that's doing this stuff up here. So, I that's why I encourage the the funnel so much, and it's it's the way. I mean, it is the way. This up here is when you're going at it with like straight to sale. And I mean, there's been big time marketers proven wrong in this deal, you know, like where it's like, cause if you're coming completely out of the, you know, out of nowhere and you're going straight for a sale, it has to be such a, I don't know. It just has to be such a powerful offer. And so, you know, intense that you, you can pull it off. And even then, I really don't think you're going to beat somebody that's generating um, leads and then nurturing those leads because we just don't make decisions like that. As human beings, we just don't make decisions like that. So, you know, I, I strongly, that's why like this right here, you know, really is the best way, you know? And, and what's crazy is you can have, you know, he, you can have, it's like, here's your landing page to generate leads. You can have right away on the next page that sale option. I mean, that's what I do. It's like they get this value video up here and then they can go down the page and they can buy. But to get them onto the list only through a purchase first, that's, that's going to be tough. And like just, I actually had a question about like that three page thing. So like I know the funnel at first was four pages, but I have seen where after they enter their email, they watch the video and under it is the calendar page instead of them going to another one. Is there a yeah. difference in the conversion right there? Uh you know, here's here's what here's what I can say. It's it's something you you have to test and and it and it matters how you get them in from over here, right? So what happens is anytime that you, so like, let's say somebody opts in to learn something. And as soon as they get there, they see a calendar or a buy button. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, this was a, you know, what is this? You know, like. That's why you let it have a few seconds before it appears. Right? Yeah. I, at least I want them to get into it like for a minute at least before, but I always test, man. Like right now, I have it. Like when they opt in right now, it's a full blown sales page with a button underneath it right away. But nice. and then I'll do that for like several thousand opt ins, 
and then I'll take it and I'll I'll stall it for 30 seconds for several thousand opt-ins. I'll take a, a temperature and if it's drastically different, I'll make the choice of one or the other based off how it operates, right? Yeah. If it's very close, I don't I just leave it there. Right. And the fourth page, um, what happens with people is when they make a decision to buy something or when they make a decision to click on something, there's like this micro commitment that they make mm -hmm. and it, it causes them to, to do things different in their brain. It's really strange. Yeah, that and, makes sense. Yeah. So, and, and the problem here is this, if, if people don't know why you matter or they don't understand the value ahead of time, it's just everything is expensive. So that's why I like to get them in front of the value first. And I like to make sure that they understand the value and I can actually demonstrate the value because then the price all of a sudden changes. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it this this model here is is so different, you know, and and like I said, if you're building leads in the sense that in order for me to get from here to here to get onto your email list, okay? If I have to purchase first to get on there, you you're the the you're going to build such a small your email list growth will be so small and Overall, this is like, this isn't my idea or some fantasy that I have. Objectively, email is the highest value return on investment that there is. So I want to build that list. I want to build that community. I want to work with them. I want to show, I want to demonstrate why I matter to them. Hmm. And I want to get them into my world as, as quickly as I possibly can. And you know, with that being said, the list is everything. The list is everything. And the other part is too, is let's say that TikTok does get banned. You know, let's say that, you know, these platforms just something happens. You got your all you your your lifeblood is is right here. Cause it doesn't matter what every platform right now could just shatter and whichever one that comes up, I can email my list and say, Hey guys, I'll meet you over here. Otherwise, my audience is just gone. I've seen this happen to my my friends. Like I've seen this happen to people with like a million subscribers on their Facebook pages and stuff. And then, you know, the whole like pay to play thing hit and like their business dissolved overnight, literally. And it's like, that's why having something free come... You know, I can get if I can get on here for free, then present the value to me on the next page. That's where that's where the you know, this is the page right here that you want to do that on. Again, if you have a massive email list or you have or you don't care about I can't say I can't say the second one. It's like a plane has to go a certain speed before it can get enough lift. And if you don't get that lift because you're going so slow, you'll just, it just erodes. Mm. You know, when people are like, well, yeah, but when you go into a store, you, uh, there's, you don't have to opt in before you buy something. And we buy stuff all the time. Why are you at the store? You were already educated before you got there, or you wouldn't be there to go get it. Completely yeah. different. You're already educated. And once somebody becomes a buyer, then they tend to buy more things. That's why you'll go in for some toothpaste and leave with a cart full of crap. Because you're, you've already made commitments to buy. And even the things that you do depend on, or th that you do decide to buy, you've already been you know, in like inoculated by it. You've already been in, in, in introduced to those things. Very seldom do you like, I mean, we just, we just don't operate like this. This is not how humans operate. If they did, 
listen, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't have a lane. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do it, man. I mean, I, I would, I would just go straight to it. But when you see people, this is the problem when you see, this is the problem when you just copy people or you're doing something that you just seen somebody doing. You don't understand the mechanics of their whole system. You don't understand what their list looks like or what they've already built in the background. And then you spend your whole whole time going, well, shit, th this doesn't work. You know, That's great coaching, Mike. That's really good coaching. I appreciate that. Um, I hadn't deviated from that my original plan, which is to follow what you've laid out. Um, so I'm going to stay with that. I was thinking about deviating and pivoting to, you know, selling a low cost offer, but I, I, I agree. It makes a lot of sense. I think you do that later. And, and like all yeah. the things that we talked about earlier, like even the offers, you know, and, and it can be very disheartening, man. You're like, God damn it. I've been working so hard on this thing. And then this guy comes in and tells me I'm doing it all wrong. And now what? And it's like, I get that. I get that. I want to share with you like the most powerful thing that I believe, and this is coming in build lab. Like what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be going through and I'm going to be dropping essentially kind of like the overview video for each one of the nine pillars today. That's, that's like my goal today. And just so you have like a true under, and a lot of it, you know, a lot of you will be like, okay, I get this, but you know, there's also details that we got to get into in each one of the pillars. But I do want to share with you that having having this created in your business i i really i encourage you guys to take time today and really try to organize something like this for your business okay and it it will start like this this is this it, we do this in pillar 3 okay this is pretty fuzzy let me back out a little bit So it, it, it looks like this when you're, when you're doing it. Okay. You, you want to take, I'm assuming, I'm assuming you already know who your perfect customer is. And I'm assuming, you know, obviously this is like the business model and things like that, but I'm assuming you already know who your customer is and you already have your, this message thing figured out. Like I help, you know, I help creators, to start a, you know, uh, membership program so that they can earn like the top 1% and work from anywhere without tech overwhelm or something, right? Like you have that, you have your message. I'm assuming those things. And then you want to create something like this right here. Okay. Now I've done this with you guys from the beginning. I just didn't have it. So, so gangster, right? Like I was using these little things okay. over here. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I was using like this particular model and I'm like, okay, I need to explain this in better detail. Like how, why I do things like this. Number one, it helps me, but it also helps you. And you know, when I'm laying things out like this, like these, these images like this here and like this here, I, I get like inundated with messages and emails and people like, Oh, can I have, can I have the rest of that? Or when I'm like in my, when I'm on the board and I'm doing these types of things, like think about, for instance, like up here, some of my, like, and these TikToks are a lot bigger. Now see this TikTok here, Th these types of things, when you, when you build a, you know, a visual map or something, what it does is it, it show while everybody else is yamming on about stuff, you're yeah. showing them a map of how to get out of the woods. And when you're in a, when you have a problem, would you like, think about even going to like the doctor, let's say if you went to the doctor and he was just talking about all these things that you need to do to get, you know, healthy or whatever versus he goes, all right, uh, you know, Isaiah or Robert, you're going to follow this little roadmap here. And this is what I need you to do. Okay. Hmm. That is like unbelievably more valuable to you than anything else. And you, he's got your full undivided attention too. And how you do this is you just basically do um, a brain dump, right? You do a brain dump of what is everything that needs to happen. I don't care the order. I don't care anything. And I don't need, 
you know, minute details, like, you know, fill in the blank here. I, just what is everything from like a 30,000 foot view that needs to happen as a whole in my business to get somebody from point A to point B? And you want to, whatever, I use Miro for this, okay? I just, I just jot it all down. I puke it all up. And I'm telling you, I do this. Like, if you look at uh, like my different, these different maps that I have, like these different raw material maps, like, you know, when I go to create a presentation or when I'm thinking about like how my business is going to work and operate and all these things, like I literally get in here and I'll show you like, I go crazy and I lay everything out. I map everything out and I've got all these different like scratch pads and, and all this stuff that I do. And then once I've got that all laid out, right, then I start thinking about order and I start refining it and I start thinking to myself, okay, you know, what is, um, come on, you stupid thing. What is, uh, you know, what's the pro it's always like the core essentials is like, what is the problem that I'm solving? Okay. What is that thing that I'm getting them from, from A to B? Okay. So you're, you're constantly, you're constantly keeping that top of mind. Um, otherwise, Jesus, come on, there we go. You're, you, you have to keep that con top of mind, like the problem that you're solving, because you can get lost. You can get lost real quick. And then you become like, you're just talking about nothing. And then, you know, what's the title? Okay. What am I calling this, this, this solution? Your roadmap is your solution. This, this is the, the, the product, the solution, the sort the thing that happens to get them from point A to point B, because that's all they care about. And then what's all they my, care about. It is. And what they don't care what you look like. They don't care anything. When somebody has a real problem, like if I was dying from cancer, had 30 minutes to live, my doctor could have a butt sewn to his face and, you know, talk like a, a, I don't care. Like I just, if he can fix me, that's all I care about. And that's all your people care about. And if you want to be believed, hmm. show them the map. You want to, people are like, oh, you need testimonials and, you know, show them all this crap. No, you want somebody to trust you and believe you show them the God dang map, show them the map. And why you why the map is created like this? Nothing beats that. No, you can get. I can go buy. I can go buy a hundred testimonials on Fiverr right now from real people that are saying they took my product and it changed their life, and you know all this crap. Hmm. So I was going to ask you about that since I'm doing similar to you, like the funnel building for business owners, but you've actually made seven figures with it. And I haven't. So like, how would I translate that into my message? You just what, what I'm showing you right now. Show, show them the map. Right. Create a map. And and don't be like, well, Mike's already doing that. What am I going to do? You're going to if if we were both teaching basketball, you're going to teach dribbling and shooting and, and defense just like I am. But you're going to teach it the way you teach it. And you're going to have your zing to it and your personality. I mean, mm. there's a lot of blonde brunettes. There's a lot of, you know, there's literally, you can go to the store and buy a, a certain, you know, women can go buy a bra that fits other women. It, it's not about that. It's not about that. It's, you could line up, you could line up, you know, 10 blondes in front of you, and then you could sit down and have a 10 minute conversation with each of them. And you'll pick one of them over all of them. It's called the bachelor or whatever. Right. So it's not about. It's not about anything other than, you know, I connect with this person more than this person. They're mm -hmm. going to give me love. Yeah. Okay. Hey Mike, can we, can we talk a little bit about on, on this same line, right? Because all they care about is us helping them solve their problem. We obviously need to make sure we've identified the problem and that we're building our solution around that. Can we talk a little bit about the because it doesn't matter if you know any of us think we we have that answer it it really matters it, if what the potential customer says right are we helping it do that so the validation part is kind of where i'm going 
in terms of the, the things that you like to do. I know you like to go live, right? I think that's a fantastic way. Could you talk a little bit more, you know, let's get a little granular on like a, I've never done a live, right? So I don't have a following yet. Um, I know that, you know, there's questions obviously that we want to ask because that's going to help us drive either, you know, uh, the content uh, of the solution we're creating as well as other, um, you know, uh, videos that we would create because we would, we would build content around those questions because those are probably common to a lot of different people. But that, that would be really helpful um, because I, I, I just know that we need validation of what we're doing because I could spend X number of time, amount of time building a great course in my mind, but at the end of the day, it's way off the mark, right? We need to make sure that it is validated along the way. So your question, just so I'm clear, is how do we validate our offer to the marketplace? Yeah, that's what that's one angle, right? And then because the, I know there's more than than one way to do that. And then um, what you have found to be the most successful when you are validating, I know going live and actually have a conversation with leads or, or prospects uh, in that front. Yeah, so the, nothing n nothing is in in my opinion, and I mean I would say actually more in my experience nothing has been more powerful to create a irresistible offer or create a real solution nothing has been more powerful than actually just hanging out with the person that has the problem and listening to them describe their their situation of, with the problem and and what's been holding them back and you know that has helped me carve out offers that tend to sell right to make right. sure it you know when you what happens when you come into a space where the problem's already been solved by others and you want to just help in doing that like you also want to teach basketball mm -hmm. right what can happen is you can spend so much time looking at what everybody else is doing that you you just become another jabbering mess like them right and but you're just but you're a lower powered version of them got it that's how i feel right now yeah yep it's normal i feel that way um but then what happens when you start focusing on building something that's actually really helpful and great like whatever you know the thing that you're selling you don't need to validate whether people want that or not people are buying it at a nauseum like people are constantly buying this already like period okay what what needs to happen now is you need to have the focus on how can i solve this problem easier, faster, um, the, the experience itself, uh, unique perspective on, on maybe some different things that, you know, I feel like if the other, per you know, I feel like this other person's really great at doing what they do, but here's the things that I, I don't like about the way they do it. And I want to do that differently. That's the way you want to think about it. And, and then you want to create what I'm talking about right here will set you free. And I mean this, like I'm a hundred percent vested on this. I didn't realize how much of this I was just doing naturally, but you want to set your, your salute. I don't care if you're selling napkins. I could talk, I could create a three phase, nine step, and each step has, you know, three actions. I could set this up if I was selling napkins. The phases would be where do I get the raw materials for my napkins? And what do those stages look like? And you'd be like, Mike, wh why in the hell would you even bother? You're selling napkins. 
Because while you're out there selling napkins against me, and while other people have their picture of their napkins and they're selling napkins, I'm going to talk about where we source the materials for our napkins. I'm going to talk about why we condition the materials so that it's got a different texture and softness to it. And then I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you the way we deliver it to you. And then I'm going to talk about what matters to the environment because of my napkins. I'm going to show you why people use our napkins in different ways. I'm going to give you resources. And so all of a sudden, I've got, I'm showing you how to get the best napkin because that was the, that's the stage in between here to here, right? That this is the, I need a napkin, right? The second phase is like our delivery of our napkins. The third phase is like how people are using them. And then I go through these different steps. And so now all of a sudden I've built my entire marketing, my entire marketing and my emails and my follow-up and my presentations and everything stem from the actual things that actually happen for me to get the solution for you. And so while everybody else is just showing their napkins, I'm over here explaining the, the value, the quality, the reasoning, the story, the everything to you. And you'll fizzle because you'll run out of, of just showing a picture of it while I'm over here demonstrating that, you know, we reuse certain things to help the environment. Like everything will be, I will beat you. Maybe not at first because you're out there already talking about it, but long run, I'll beat you and, and, and could take you out real quickly. And a, a good example of this is a lot of people were talking about, um, you know, uh, marketing or business. And then Gary V says, Hey, why don't you ride in the back of a suburban with me? And I'll talk about everything that I'm doing. I'm going to take you through every single stage of my life and building a business. And he, 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 he slaughtered people. This is the difference when you create this map and you have something like this to go to the marketplace with it, it changes everything. And then here's what happens. This being your core product. Robert, when you were talking about other offers, I created this. Um, I I was explaining this the other day, and I I created this uh, little image here. Where did I put it? Right here. This this all of a sudden. Um, let me get this out of the way. Here's what happens when you create this little roadmap, okay? Number one, it becomes everything, okay? When I go to do an email, I just peel off a piece of the product and I talk about it in an email and I show how it relates to them getting from A to B. My lead magnets, everything stems from this thing right here once you have it. And then... What happens then is, is this, each one of the steps in your main product can become its own roadmap and product. And you could sell this for 97 bucks or, or $200 or, or whatever. And then, you, so you could sell each stage like this, my stage four is about lead magnets. I could create a little mini course, as you said earlier, just about how to create and sell lead magnets. And inside of that little tiny mini course, I can say, now guys, what this little mini course that you just partook in, that's just step four in the main, that's just step four in my main product that shows you how to start and grow a you know seven figure e-learning business, right? And now all of a sudden, the value I gave them, the money they paid me, they're, they're already a customer. So now their likelihood of spending money with me again, if what I gave them was valuable, is, is very high. So the, R, the ROI of that customer just became massive. Mm -hmm. And then this is like extreme. This thing doesn't, this is exact, this whole thing here doesn't, it, the selling of that is like almost non non needed because of what they got in this little piece and then i can even take this is where it gets crazier so i could take like this 
And inside of this program, this is why I call it fractal marketing method. I could take the step inside of my lead magnet roadmap. I could take one of those steps out and create another little tiny roadmap for just that step of that program. And that's when you can, those are your $7 offers. Those are your little things that build your community. Those are the little, um, you know, products and programs that, that lead up to, and that's, and then it can, it just keeps going in on itself. But when you do it this way, the clarity that you have in your own offering, and every time you talk, you're not just talking, you're, you're always pointing back to why you're talking about it and where it lives in your, in your, in your process. And now you don't have to worry about validating or being better than or whatever. I'm like, Hey guys, see that forest over there that you're trying to walk through. I know how to get through it. And I mapped my entire process to get through it. So you want to come with me? Let me show you actually the steps to get through the forest and the potholes and the branches and the thorn bushes. And let me show you why I do step four. And let me explain, you know, why we put sugar in before we bake the pie and why the sugar adds to the taste and flip that all of us, everything changed. And Porsche does this. This could be the whole Porsche, but then inside of the Porsche, guess what? I can change the leather seats, put different wheels on it, increase the stereo package. And then you can go just buy that stuff or you could buy the whole Porsche, the clothing, the race events, the, you know, it's, it's endless. They have watches you can buy. I mean, it's, it's literally insane, but this is where I got this like concept from was like, oh, everything that I, so if you have this core like I say, this core, like this perfect product roadmap, this core product. If you have that, it be, it literally solves every stinking problem that you'd ever have. Because inside of that thing, as I say, inside of it, there are, come on. Inside of it is all these other premium offerings that you can create and they're unique instantly you know a porsche a porsche wheel is unique from any other car company's wheel because it's a porsche wheel made by porsche okay it may have similar characteristics to a ferrari wheel or something but it's not a ferrari wheel and and the reason why they do it the your right. videos yeah Th this is probably <laughs> you're probably gonna laugh this is probably a dumb question in terms of the phases and I'm just looking at this, you know, uh, as a common sense automated machine versus traffic engine. It seems in my brain, it seems like you'd have traffic engine that is required to drive all of the prospects to an automated machine. Why am I, why am I looking at it like that? You're exact. What you said is exactly right. So you would you would need traffic first to drive to the automated machine, right? Right. You have to have an automated machine first so that you can drive traffic to it. Uh, okay, that's what I'm looking at that way. Okay, yeah, yeah. The platform and the framework has to be there. So yeah, you got to have an offering. It's got somewhere to go. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's like essentially, it's like here's the here's the product and the offer and the customer. Here's the machine that delivers the product, sells the customer, generates the lead. Now that we have an offer and a machine to sell it, now let's start worrying about driving traffic to it. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Yep. That's, that's why, you know, and everything has this, right? A tree starts as a seed. You need dirt, sunlight, water. And then as it grows, it develops bark, branches, leaves, and then all of a sudden you get apples from it, and then it re it, it re engages back into this, and it's the same thing that happens here. Everything does this. Everything. If one thing does it, everything does it, because everything is one thing. Una verse one song. It all comes. At, it's like 
everything came out of the earth. It wasn't dropped off by some thing. You are the earth. You eat the earth. You breathe oxygen. For, like you are this thing. You, an atom is just a, a an atom is just a scient a, a scientist is just like an atom studying an atom. Have you noticed how like the our solar system looks just like a like an atom? They're just different sizes, but there's like this core nucleus the sun, and then there's these electrons going around it, planets. <laughs> everything is just systems inside of systems inside of systems. So as it is for one thing, so it is for everything. And so it's like everything operates like this. Everything is everything else, right? I eat things that come out of the planet. I crap them out. They go back into the planet to grow things that come out of the planet. Like, you know, just like an apple tree apples, the earth peoples. <laughs> so it's like, just like your product, your product is everything else. It is the thing that gives everything else that you need life. Like the, the thing that you create, the steps that you create and the process you create to you know, do this step, let's say, yeah, it, it's words first, but then we transform those words into, you know, an image that we can represent the words with, right? Like a movie is a script first, and then it becomes a movie. And the movie represents the script. And, you know, it's like books are turned into movies. And the movies sell a lot more than just the book uh, because as, as creatures, we are visually, uh, we understand things visually like 60 something thousand times faster than we do uh, in an audible way or a, or a reading way, a word way. And that's just by nature, you know, we needed to see the, the lion in the bush. Okay. So, it's um turning something into that in in the world that we live in here or or frankly anything like the the industry we're in if you're over there talking about things and i'm over there talking about things but i'm showing you a visual representation i'm going to disrupt the the marketplace much quicker than you are so um the big thing that you you know that I want you to take from this is the you know get to work on building out some sort of visual roadmap that you can represent your solution with because the moment you do that you're you're you become you're instantly going to stand out against the noise so you know, it's, it's really important if you want everything to become much easier for you, just do this, lay out your, lay out your little phases, call them whatever you want, get your stages, you know, step one, step two, or stage one, stage two, whatever. And then what are the actions for each one of these stages or pillars, whatever you want to call them? That help? Hello? All righty. Does anybody else have any other questions? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Know. Yeah, I don't know if we're having like connection issues or what. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's that definitely makes it more clear with the roadmap that you laid out. 
Yeah, I mean, it just, it makes your life so much easier. I mean, you... Yeah, I think I need to define, like, my target audience on who I want to target. I don't know. Just because it's, it's broad. Like, I, I want to focus on more of, like, the VSL funnel. Mm -hmm. um, I know Build Lab is teaching all types of ways to build digital product. Like, But I want to focus on that VSL funnel. Um, I don't know if, if, that's, if that's good or I, should I go more broad? No, I mean, you know, it, it's like this. I heard... Um... I've said it a lot of different ways, uh, but then I heard um, Hermosi say it the other day, and and it's exactly the same thing. It's like you start out in the in the pond, mm. you become the king in the pond or queen or whatever, and then you move up to the lake, and then you you know you conquer there, and then you move up to the you know the ocean right? These are waves, <laughs> right? And you move to the ocean and that's just how it naturally works, right? Like yeah. for instance, when Tesla came out, they didn't start with the cheap car, right? And Elon even said that you, people ask him all the time. They're like, why is your first, you, you expect to grow a company and your first car is a quarter million dollars. He's like, yeah, I have to sell those to the people that are like super knit. He's like, there's only a few people in the world that are going to buy these cars, but by selling these cars, it gives us the money to build the cheaper cars. Mm. And it's the same thing when you, in, 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 in talking about what you're talking about with a niche, it's the same kind of system or, or mindset where, you know, maybe you're going to help. Um, and, and just start with who you like anyway, who do you want to hang out with? I made this mistake um, early on where, uh, you know, I went so hyper niche on a pro. I went into a niche that I just, um, I seen, a, I seen a need there and it wasn't particularly the type of people that I wanted to always hang out with all the time. It was not that they were bad or not that I didn't like them or not that they were anything other than it just wasn't something that I wanted to, you know, always be connected with just because it like, I don't know, it just wasn't like my cup of tea or whatever. Um, like the conversations and blah, blah, blah. And then I, so I went into this niche that I just went into it thinking like, oh, I can help these people and I'll, I'll go into it. After a while, it started to work on me and I was like, eh. So what I say is fine. Just think about who you'd already want to hang out with. If, you know, if you lay out your, uh, you know, if you lay out who you, for instance, in this little example that I have here, when you're, when you're laying out your, your skills and passions and all these things, and you're listing out all your passions and you're listing out all your skills and all that stuff, think about like, and know this too, right? Like know this, that everything lives inside of this health, wealth, and relationships. Okay. So skateboarders, you could put skateboard up here. Skateboarders will care about their health, making money, and their relationships. So the reason I'm saying that is you can replace this with anything. Farmers, you know, computer programmers, com you know, gamers, and you can then help them with each of these, you know, core markets right here. Well, let me ask you, Mike, since I know you did really well with martial artists, like what's another niche you see that has a, a need in the market for this type of stuff that you think would be good for me to go after? Yeah. Well, again, that that's, you're getting closer to the right question. My question for you is, and I, and I say this because every, every industry, every niche needs help with this. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Like you could replace every, every niche needs help with money. Every niche needs help with their relationships. Every niche, every, you know, type of person needs help with, you know, all of those things. So that's why I say, who do you like hanging out with? Who do you talk to? 
who do you want to be around? Because you, you can start helping them right. with that. So it's not, you know, what niche do you see needs help with funnels? They all need help with funnels. This is not a, you know, this is not a, um, you know, everybody knows who the rock is. Not everybody knows what funnels are. Yeah. Right? It's not, it's <laughs> not like a, a, a household name yet, right? As much as it may seem like it is, it's very far from that. Right. Yeah. And it, in, and in many cases, most people that want to start doing something, you know, they don't even know what the heck it is. Right. Like maybe that, you know, so it's like, I, that's why I say you need to really, what are your passions and interests? You know, what it's mostly just entrepreneurship and business. So yeah, but let's of- just say, let's say you're a, think about it like this. And this is the prompt you give yourself and it can be just what you said it is. I'm not saying okay. it can't be. I'm very, I'm the same way. Like, but I also like to, I love cars and, and, and I love fishing and I love traveling and I love nature and I love painting and I love, you know, music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's all these other things that I really, you know, so I ask you this is like, imagine you're a multi-billionaire, you're in perfect health, you have perfect relationships and you've got all the money you could, you couldn't spend it if you bought everything you ever wanted to 10 times. Let's say you're in that position and you've donated to every charity you've ever wanted to in maximum capacity. What are you going to do for the rest of your time on earth so that you don't go insane? Yeah, this, the answer will probably not answer the question you want, you want me to, but if I'm being honest, I'd probably spend my time with my dad because he's going to die in like 20 years. Yeah. So so morbid. (laughs) Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. Right. So, but imagine that you've already spent maximum time with him okay. and, and, and essentially, hopefully you're not going to be dead in 20 years either. Yeah. So what are you going to do? How are you going to spend your time mm. for the rest of your time here so that you don't go insane? Right. And maybe it's, well, I'll help other people. Okay, great. Gotcha. But it's just an exercise to help you think about like, what else do you care about? Right. Mm. When you're not doing entrepreneurship and business, what are you doing? I I literally wake up and then go to sleep thinking about business. I mean, like literally, that's I'm literally the most boringest person ever. No, there's nothing wrong with this. I get it. I'm I'm practically the same way, but I also um you know, I'll take time maybe over my lunch break and I'll go out and go go fishing for 30 minutes to just like detach from just constantly how do i prevent and solve problems right yeah yeah i'm sure you know i'm sure if you look around your room or something you might find that you're into technology or you might find that you also like you know certain little we all have these little things that we vice from like i've never met anybody that doesn't even like the most strictest of like entrepreneurial people they have these little knacks and vices about them um i mean i would say that now that i'm thinking about it i used to play a lot of video games and i like video games okay how can you show uh gamers how to continue because what they want to do is game yeah how can you show gamers how to make money gaming or in the gaming industry using using funnels and you know digital products and things like that right or yeah you see what i'm saying yeah i do see it i do see that niche being a little bit underserved too because the, their main way of making money is just through like youtube videos or twitch streaming which you have to it's really hard to grow in there so no i mean show you could literally and and here's what happens the niche that you choose right now isn't i, I mean i used to be like for years heavily yeah. vested solely on helping martial arts business owners get students. And the market pushed me out as I grew. Mm. 
you're not going to stay. The thing that gets you to here isn't going to get you to here. Okay. So you can start there, become the, you, you know, the, the authority and the person that gamers look to in your own circle. You know, again, don't forget with just a thousand true fans that pay you a hundred bucks a month, you're a multimillionaire. Mm. That's a hundred thousand a month. I think I heard you say in a past video that someone was making a hundred thousand subscribers paying them like forty dollars a month or something. Well, a Andrew Tate has over two hundred thousand subscribers paying him forty nine bucks a month. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like eleven million a month or something crazy or something, <laughs> whatever. And it's an it's an obscene amount of money. Like people that are like, Oh, I'm not making money unless I'm making a million a year. Dude, no, you're you've just never made money before because if you're making a consistent after taxes couple thousand a day, it's unless you've got, like I said, you know, a Gucci diet. <laughs> and even then the Gucci diet. <laughs> you know, even then you, you're you're still gonna have leftovers. Mm. It's like the top one percent. You know the people. The, if you want to be in the top one percent of income earners, you need to make like eleven hundred dollars a day. Well, that could be selling two five hundred dollar products a day. Mm. So, you know, my for me, like with Build Lab, I just want to get to a thousand subscribers consistently, and from there, you know, I'll increase whatever, right? But it's like. You just want a thousand active, true customer, client, fans, whatever, right? It, or audience. Like I, my YouTube channel, when I was in martial arts, never got past like 600 people or whatever, mm. like 600 subscribers, not even a thousand. And it was a multiple, like, like, I mean, I made seven figures in that niche. Yeah. And I did because... Most of the people that watched me just didn't subscribe. And I was so niche with what I talked about that having 600 martial arts business owners following my YouTube channel, that was massive, man. Mm. You know? And so what I, what I, you know, want to share with you is like, start with something that you're already, because you can speak, if you, if you were a, you know, a gamer before or whatever, you can speak to that. I took martial arts for like six years so I could speak to that and talk the insider language with them and connect with them. But then I had this skill set of online marketing and business and stuff like that. So I yeah. married the two together and found that and that was the market demand, which is, you know, this this image right here on the screen, right? It's like that's what that's what this represents is. You know, I had the the online business and marketing skills. I at one time was, you know, I, I was very passionate and interested in martial arts. And I found, you know, I found that I could, you know, marry these two things together. And then I found the market demand. I went on Facebook and all these guys were talking about, you know, what what color of flyer paper works better than another <laughs> one. And I'm like, holy crap, these guys are like stuck in the freaking 80s here. So yeah, that makes sense. That's what you do with the gamers. And it and you go in there and you're like, when you start speaking, you can speak on that, like, hey, um, you know, if you're a gamer and you wanna and you love gaming, I get it. I was that way. And you're like, how can I just, you know, be a gamer and 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 do what I, I love every single day? But how can I create an income that will pay me either what a job would or more than a job, possibly? without me having to go get a nine to five job. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you a really cool opportunity that you have right now in the e-learning industry or whatever, where you can take your uh, ability to, you, you could show them how they can teach others how to, they could create a small subscription community. You know, you'll find all the different little um, opportunities that they have. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. You've got, you know, you've got membership sites, You've got courses, you've got coaching, you've got, you know, these are, these are like the, the digital space. This is, right. this, you know, so become their voice. And then here's what's going to happen, which is what exactly what happened to me. 
I started getting a lot of uh, people coming to me that were not martial arts business owners asking me if they could still buy my system and apply it to their attorney business or their coaching business or their, it didn't, you know, they're all, and I kept getting this and kept getting this. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm missing a lot of people out there in the marketplace, but I had already established myself and had that story of working in this other niche and showing the the impact that I was able to make there, which brought me to here. Yeah, yeah, that definitely makes sense. I'd say the only thing, I because I have thought about the gaming niche before and bringing it towards the funnel side, but the only thing is like martial arts business owners or business owners in general, they have like the money to invest. And I wanted to start off with that maybe $3,000 price range. And well, a listen, lot of gamers are younger. What do you, what do you think? Well, let me ask you this though. You, and this is like I was talking with Robert earlier. Yeah. Every, like, when you, take take Andrew Tate, for instance. Mm. His product is $49. He, after he had over 100,000 subscribers, then he brought in this one and he started like this uh you know basically like a vip inner circle type thing and he you know it, it was like i don't know it's like five or ten thousand dollars to be a part of this inner thing right but he started here where i said to go last right so now okay well how do you justify this mike well how I can justify this with you is one of, you know, answering a couple of questions. Number one, how much time do you have to, you know, are you making money outside of this thing right now? Right. How much total addressable marketplace is there? Gaming and gamers is probably one of the most, it's probably one of the biggest industries out there. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the entertainment, it's, it's like huge. How much money then the next question, how much money do you need to survive each month? Well, let me ask you this. If you had a, let's say $49 product, it was a monthly subscription. I would definitely make it recurring. And you started your, you know, country club, or in other words, your online membership program where you shared with other gamers how to create money and time so that they could game all day okay if you had just a hundred kids or adults hell i know more adults that are like gamers because it's their it's like instead of going to the bar because they can't afford to they get a release by going and playing some you know like modern warfare and, and getting their stress out that way or whatever right but if you had, this is not dollars here. If you had, you know, a hundred people, just a hundred people paying you 49 bucks, that's 4,900 a month. You're above what you would go make at a job on 100%. average. And if you can do this, you can, you can, you can exit. You can 10 exit, just do more of what you did there. And then what happens is out of these people here, what will happen is some of them will want to, they will then be making more or they will have rich parents or they, a spouse or somebody and they'll want your next level. And then they'll want your next level. Mm. That makes sense? 100%. So, sense. You know, it's the and and it's it's really the the eighty twenty principle, or the ninety five five principle. Out of out of a hundred people, twenty of them will spend ten times more than the other hundred, and out of these twenty, five of them will spend even more uh, than those people. And and a guy did a uh, he was his name's Perry Marshall. Um, he was at a an event. And he was in the room full of entrepreneurs. And he said, anybody that owns a Rolex, please stand up. 
and like you know a third of the room there's like a couple thousand people in there a third of the room stood up and then he um then he goes okay everybody that's standing whoever owns two rolexes stay standing and like half of the room sat down and then he goes anybody that has more than five rolexes please stay standing there was like three people left and then he unhooked this he had like the highest rainbow presidential daytona whatever is like a you know sixty thousand dollar rolex he goes he, he takes it off his wrist and he goes of the three people that were staying there he goes i'll sell this watch to you right now for fifty thousand. and the guy goes i'll take it oh wow so the the point was is there's always there's always somebody in a there's always somebody in that room that will spend that maximum with you if it is offered. I remember uh, Grant Cardone said one time, he goes, we never sold a $100,000 offer until we had one. <laughs> so that's why I say to you, you know, those, those different stages here, you don't, like I was telling Robert, you don't have to, it, it's, there's no concrete rule that says it has to be this way. Mm. But on average, you're going to do, you know, like, think about it this way. Here, you have to get 100 customers in a month to make 4,900 that month, right? Right. Here, I could sell something for 5,800, and I need to work the whole month to get one customer. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's exactly, that was my thought process. Like when you said one offer, one funnel to seven figures, I was like, I, I, I just want to make that. But yeah. That, well, the reincurring does sound pretty good as well. Yeah. Like, well, it it's, and you're going to have a, like I said, these are stages of your, your business. So maybe you start here and as you have this thing going, you know, let's say that in 90 days, you get this thing up to, let's just say, 100 members, okay? You're posting on YouTube. I would just, if I were you, I would work on one platform, like YouTube. Gamers are on there constantly watching other gamers. And be on that platform, posting religiously and in high volume so that you can get your chops and get good at it and find out what works and... As you get better and better and better, you'll be able to post less and your videos will mean more. Mm. But if you can volume, you know, over over quality, but then pretty soon it's like quality. And if you still have volume, it's it's like quality and volume beats everything. <laughs> so you, you start out with quantity, then you get quality, and then you can decide how you want to spend your time. But then as you're building this thing, let's say 90 days later, you've got 100 members. Okay, you're not rich, but you're not poor. And then right. from there, you'll learn so much. You'll learn so much here. You can quickly, within that 90 days, you can be thinking about how do I build this pillar offer? And then you can charge that 3K or, or whatever. And then you you know as you're going through those things, maybe – you know, another 90 days later or a year later, then you're thinking about how do I how do I start a mastermind? Because now some of the, you know, I didn't realize some of these gamers in here are also corporate executives that make 300,000 a year at their job. And they really want to learn how to do this thing. And you can have a $25,000 per year, 100 member cap, you know, in-person mastermind at that time. And, you know, that's this is how it stages out. Mm. So... Like I said, it, it there's no fast rule here on this. We can work with averages, but I I think that you'd be real strong at at being able to do that. I think you'd connect with that audience. You could, you know, I uh, was we were on a vacation um, over New Year's, and I was with my son and his friend. He had a friend come along with him, and his friend was really like entrepreneurial ish. And then, you know, our daughter, she brought a friend and she, her, she, they were both trying to be like, they were both kind of entrepreneurially minded. 
And right. I was talking to them and, and you know, these are like 16 year olds. And I'm like, you know, how much would you guys, if you knew that it could help you learn how to build your entrepreneurial influence, whatever on, on social media, whatever, how much would you be willing to spend each month to learn how to do that? Well, the one girl, um, she spends like $8 a day on a freaking drink or some shit. And I'm like, holy crap, you know, that's over $200 a month. Yeah. And so I asked the other one, he goes, I'd spend, you know, 50, hundred bucks a month learning how to do it. And these are 16 year olds. So, you know, and then there's, you can also, it's like, there's this too, you know, let's, again, you have to work with like, I like to work with numbers in these cases all the time, just because, you know, numbers don't lie, if you will. Um, uh, here we go. Whoops. Dang it. Okay. So this is always interesting to me. I still, it's, it's hard for me to fathom, but it, it's very helpful when it comes to these types of things. Um, there we go. You see my screen? Yeah. So how much the average American spends in a day, okay? And this goes from baby boomers all the way down to Gen Zs, so that's sub-25 years old. Look at the daily average, 92 bucks a day. Jeez. Like, and it shows you, look, so this here, this is all Americans, right? Look, look at what they just like on education, they spend like four bucks a day. Well, four bucks a day is a hundred and something a month, right? Here's under right. 25. Okay. They're, they're spending, they're spending money on, they're spending six bucks to eat out. Now, if this, you know, if a gamer, you could say, listen, you can go buy a hap you can go buy a cheeseburger every day, or you can invest that into you never having to work for somebody else, getting to play games all day th that you want to play and, and making yeah. more than you would at a job. What do you want to do? And you only need, you know, if you had a thousand people giving you 49 bucks a month, man, like Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah. It's it's def I'm definitely gonna run with it. You see how like this like like look at this. How many Americans are gamers? More than 214 million Americans play video games. So we could say then um uh what is one percent of two hundred and fourteen million? Wait, was that the answer? Yeah, I think so. so wait, two million, two million one hundred and forty thousand. Okay, so like, what is point one percent? Let's just say you had you had got point one percent. That's still twenty one two two hundred and fourteen thousand. So what if you got point zero one percent of the gamers? That's still twenty one thousand. What if you were just so you have to be 0.001% even if you were 0.01.001% effective with your marketing to gamers you still yeah. got 214,000 times that's not a bad living brother mm -mm, not at all Okay. So sometimes that's why I say like, you know, people talk about, oh, you know, I want to make, a, it's like, dude, you have to be 0.001% correct. Shit. I think maybe we can throw another zero in there. Hell, even at that, let's say, what is that? One, one millionth of a percent or one, one hundred thousandths of a percent. Mm -hmm. That's still 10 grand a month, man. Yeah, definitely.
You see what I'm saying? And you can work, you'll grow from there. It's not like you stop there. <laughs> yeah. And then your story, your story grows with you and those people grow too. Yeah. Thank you for walking me through that. Yeah. Good, man. All right. Well, does anybody else have uh, any questions while we're here? Yeah, you bet, Mike. What's there going on, Bill? Bit. Yeah, um, this is kind of a long background thing, just to kind of bring it around. Yeah, I got involved with your um, with your martial arts program. I remember. I'm on your sixty seven a month program. Yep, and. Uh, so I don't know exactly. I've got into this shiny object syndrome. So I've gotten a bunch of different programs. I get in there and I go, man, I didn't remember buying that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, so I've kind of ended up um, settling on um, right about now with uh, Russell Brunson's uh, Click Funnels mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. Bought his uh, program that teaches you how to build funnels. And then he also just bought uh, Dan Kennedy. Yeah, Dan Kennedy stuff. So mm -hmm. I've got those marriage together and found it really fascinating. And good stuff. So, yeah, really good stuff. So I'm just new to online stuff. So I'm older and kind of going, oh my gosh, I'm learning online stuff plus just all this really good stuff. So, um, where I ran across your stuff again. So how, when did you switch into school labs and kind of how is it what you're doing now? What is it? Is it a different platform or can you kind of catch me up to speed? Yeah, no, that's good. So school, uh, I used to house my uh, course and everything on ClickFunnels because okay. there was no school, right? Okay. And then... The, the my mentor, which was Sam Ovens, he was one, like I actually started with Dan Kennedy back in the day, and oh. then Dan, Dan Kennedy led me to like Frank Kern. Then I learned about Brennan Burchard, and it just like started stacking. And then Russell Brunson came into the scene, and like then you know when ClickFunnels came out in 2014, I was one of the beta users, and I got oh. ClickFunnels, and then you know, that was like the ultimate unlock. It was like, oh gosh, here you can build funnels. You can have a course, you can do email. And so I was really like excited about all that. And then um, I had my course on ClickFunnels, which was fantastic. And then school came out. Then So then I got to Sam Ovens, which Sam Ovens kind of like, he was just, he, um, and he doesn't do it anymore. He runs school. He created school. But what he taught was like online consulting, which is essentially what I do now. Um, and that he he was the person that I just, you know, mind, body and soul connected with. And like he had a great process. It made sense to me. Um, and I, I created that. Then I created the martial arts, uh, the Dojo Student Blueprint, martial arts growth. And that was the niche that I started with. And then at, through COVID and through all those things and just getting more attention from all of the market in the same realm of what I was talking about with you guys, uh, I started to branch out into just helping people start and grow online businesses. And so, and then I had like a little stint where I was doing marketing. Well, what happened there was um, I obviously started opening up to a bigger market, same exact principles, same exact system. But instead of saying, if you're a martial arts business owner, I'm saying, Hey, if you're an on, if you're an entrepreneur or an online coach, consultant, course creator, it's the same thing. You're, you're coaching martial arts or you're coaching basketball or fitness or mindset or whatever. It's all coaching. And so I, I just started to branch out. Well, when I did that, um, I started uploading to school because school, like with my, uh, sorry, with my ClickFunnels program, I had a ClickFunnels, then I had a Facebook group, and then I had this other uh, calendar thing, Calendly, where people could go and join my my weekly call. Well, Sam taught me that, and then he goes, I'm going to make a platform, a software, 
that marries all that stuff together. So I was still using ClickFunnels for my funnels. And I then moved people from my ClickFunnels course. I then moved my course over to school because school had one login and then they had their their group, they had their private group so I could get rid of Facebook. Didn't have to have didn't have to log into this and this. So I got mm -hmm. rid of Facebook and I had my community with one login. I could also put my course inside of there. And mm -hmm. it had some of the course features that I wanted like it would show completion rates and all these different things and it was just really clean and simple because it was built by somebody that was building a tool for themselves for their own business. Mm -hmm. And then it also had a calendar integrated into it. So it had every single thing that I needed for my program to operate because my programs have a course, they have a weekly Q&A call, and then they have a private community to, to connect with each other and, and build community. So it had all three of those things and it was, it was great. And it was my mentor did it. So I was like, ah, this is great. You know, I, I, I see what he's doing because I was, I learned from him, whatever. And so I moved everybody over there. Well, great. Got my funnel, got my course community calendar. Great. So I moved everybody over there, you over there, everybody. And then what happened was ClickFunnels 2.0 came out and I'm like, so jacked because I loved ClickFunnels. I'm like, yeah. God, the 2.0, this is going to be, this is it, man. I'm so stoked. I get into it. I move from ClickFunnels Classic to ClickFunnels 2.0, and I'm like pulling my hair out. Now, mind you, I've been doing online business since 2007. I have built websites with code, you know, up to drag and drop. Like I've built, I know tech and websites. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't, I was pulling my hair out using ClickFunnels 2.0. I'm like, why in the hell is this so confusing for me? Like, yeah. If this is confusing for me, somebody that knows this stuff and been using it professionally for years, there is no way I'm bringing a new person in and going to go through this mental explosion of tech overwhelm with somebody new. Now, I love Russell. I love ClickFunnels. I make a lot of money as an affiliate with ClickFunnels still because of the people that use ClickFunnels because I brought it to them. I still pay ClickFunnels $2.97 a month and I don't even use it. Um, because I want my affiliate money, right? So <laughs> I, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Well, at that time, um, my, my girlfriend's like, she's she launched this business about 90 days ago or whatever, or since September, however long that's been. And she, uh, she found this, uh, company system.io. And I was like, nothing Nothing but ClickFunnels. I was like, nothing else exists but ClickFunnels because I was like, so, inf like, I loved it. Well, mm -hmm. when I'm like, tr it's when it's taking me days to set something up in ClickFunnels 2.0, I'm like, this is a nightmare. I was like, I, 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 what is going on here? I was like, Russell, yeah. why? Why did you do this, man? I, and I was like, and I was just like, all right, forget about it. So I went to her and it was like 27 bucks a month or something. And I'm like, well, obviously it's a piece of shit. If it's only 20, you know, I'm paying <laughs> 297 over at ClickFunnels, like 27 bucks. I started looking at hers and I seen, she would show me stats for her business and like she would maneuver it in front of me. And I'm like, damn, this is, this is nice. And it was just like the original ClickFunnels, but it gave me everything. And it was a third of the price. And I'm like, so the new user is going to be attracted to that. And I was like, and I was real weary with it before I brought it out. I'm like, ah, let me, let me really use this thing to find out. Cause sometimes it can feel real great in the beginning. And then when like power comes to, or you need extra energy and power, it's like, it'll break. Right. Um, right. And so it's like a cheap sports car. you know. <laughs> and, and so <laughs> then, then pretty soon I was like, damn, this thing's holding up. I'm like, damn, this thing is nice. And it was like really good. And so I just moved my funnel stuff over to there. And I was like, I'm going to use it. I love it. It's, it's to me, I enjoy it more than the original ClickFunnels, which is a lot to say. And yeah. so I, I use system.io. It's got a great referral program. It, it operates to me very, very clean and simple. It's continuing to do great things. 
And I don't need all that stuff that ClickFunnels 2.0 has. Like that thing is robust and it's so robust that it busted in my head. Like I didn't need <laughs> all that crap, right? I don't need all that stuff, right? Um, now, you know, whatever. I I got with system.io, I plugged it in with school and like I couldn't be happier. And for me, I just need the least amount of what I need and nothing more. And I just want to make it really simple and concrete for everybody else. And so that's how I got to where I am now with this. What you're going to, I have, you know, a lot of my martial arts clients, they're like, what's this new build lab and all this stuff. It's the same dojo student blueprint, only it's more refined and, and more simplified and it's getting better and better. And it will, it'll a hundred X what the dojo student blueprint and it also uh, is going to be more versatile. It's going to be more universal for you. And I, some of my, um, you know, martial arts clients have thus taken some of the ideas and, and, you know, systems that I've done over in Build Lab, and they're doing way better with it with less complexity. So I'm evolving. It's evolving. And um, that's that's where we're at with that. And I'm putting the new the new Build Lab is literally launching like. Like yesterday, I opened up the the website, the new website, and offer to it, and then now the 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 new course is literally from today until it's you know completed round one. <laughs> it is uh it's being uh, released and built out, and then you know as that goes for you know as version two rolls out, it'll probably be pretty. You know, it'll be stay. Uh, it'll be really stabilized for you know a good year or so as we work out the kinks and and the little you know discrepancies, uh, and then you know it'll it'll evolve again. You know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if now here's a here's a little, you know, caveat with the 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 ClickFunnels 2.0. If you don't know anything else, like you've never used another platform, you've never used any of that stuff and you start with click funnels 2.0 yeah it'll be it'll be the most magical thing you've ever probably used because you don't know anything else and you learned that way right right um so that's where i don't get too you know you don't have to go to system.io i just like it because man it's it's inexpensive it's got a great program i mean it just I don't even care about the cost. I mean, it's not even like a cost thing, but it's like, I don't care how much you make or what you're doing. Efficiency is efficiency. So, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't know. Um, I just like that. And uh, so hopefully that helps. Yeah. Hey, Mike, well, I gotta go. See you. All right. See you. Isaiah. Well, that's the thing is, I mean, I've just, where I've done, jumped around with the shiny object and it's kind of like well i'm gonna keep you know this paying the 67 and because i originally got in it for my martial arts instructor and eventually to do videos of my own and haven't had the person or uh people i wanted to work with to develop videos get them out on the internet plus have the background technology to do filming and and, and funnels and stuff like that so um, I was like, okay, I'm going to do the funnels now. And they came out with a 2.0 and I'm getting in there and they're still working out a lot of bugs Yeah, and I'm going, what in the heck is going on? Granted their whole big selling point right now is we got everything in one place Yeah, type of thing. So I'm like, okay. And then, and I snagged on, I'm like, oh, I'm going to ask him or you, you know, what's kind of, what platform are you using? Is it, you know, you know, beneficial to hang on to the 67 a month and uh, do that? Or is it just better to jump on to systems.ai? What was it? AIO? It's, it's IO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just system.io. Yeah. 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 Systems.io. Um, take a look at that. All right. You know, well, you know, you're like grandfathered in from like, uh, program back in the martial arts days so i mean you'll have full access to um you know build lab and all of that stuff um you and know, my quick question yeah um just uh, uh you, are, you might already covered this my apologies is the 
new content that you're you're releasing is it in the classroom yet or if not what's the schedule i mean when i get off of here right now i'm gonna go grab a a sandwich and then I'm gonna come back and start releasing the modules and creating them and everything like that so um okay it's from this from today forward content will be unfolding inside of it so awesome yeah no it's looking uh, forward to it yeah, I'm super excited. Your feedback is overly welcomed. Like, I mean, this thing only gets better with you guys. You know, it's not just about me. It's about us. And so it, um, you know, please, as you're going through it, you know, I don't, I don't think you're going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm, 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 I'm past that. Right. I've got my lickings already. So I'm, I'm just here to make it better. I want to make a great thing for you guys, but that you know the build lab the goal with build lab is to help you have a, a like a, a real standard operating system that you can follow and get you know essentially to seven figures selling whatever it is that you want to sell and okay. you know i'm i'm just kind of pro digital products because mm -hmm. that's what is and i've done the service and physical products and I just haven't found anything that's more lucrative and profitable and fun and time rewarding that gives you time than digital products and programs and subscriptions and memberships. Like I've just never, I, if, if something comes along, I'll be sure to let you know, but I've never found anything more lucrative that gives you money time. And, and it's so fulfilling and actually helps people more than that. I mean, so, yeah. um, that's why I, I teach you how to do that. But you can take where I talk about a digital product and you can put in insert your product or offering here. And then all the rest of the systems, the funnels, the email automations, the marketing, that's all going to be the same, whether you're selling boats or boomerangs or, or, or digital products, it doesn't matter. You can, you can apply it and it'll work. Um, so that's uh, it's funny, you know, <laughs> like the Dan Kennedy, the Frank, it's like, I used to think all of them had a different system or something. <laughs> I used to think that they were all like these gods that had this like magical way of doing things. And then when you get, you know, years into all that, you realize they're all saying the exact same thing wearing their shirt <laughs> and their yeah. personality. And, and it, it, um, I used to be scared to death to like, go out and say that I was going to help somebody do online marketing and online business. I'm like, that's I'm like, Frank Kern talks about that. If he finds out I'm doing it, he's probably going to attack me legally and like shut me down. And then I was like, you're a freaking idiot, man. Like I was like, it took me going to like a, a, a mastermind where they're like, all right, everybody in here that teaches like funnels and stuff, stand up. And like half, there's like a thousand people stood up. I'm like, Oh shit. These are my, these are my homies in here. Huh? So I was like, then all of a sudden, and then at, at like a lunch break, it was like, we were all talking about it. And I'm like, oh shit. Okay. I got, all right, cool, man. I'm a basketball coach too. You know? Yeah. The, <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. No, it is. Uh, you know this guy, right? Oh yeah. 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 So it's. Uh, that was my light bulb moment. Yeah. No, I read that. Is. I was like, all right, I get it. Yep. And it's, um, and then it just, once you get through that little, it's called imposter syndrome, essentially. Um, or, you know, the iceberg. So when, when you, when you unlock from that, now it's like, cool, man, I need to find somebody that, you know, is doing it, knows how to do it, that I connect with. And that's when I found like, like Sam ovens and stuff like that. It was like, I just, most people couldn't stand him. Cause he's like real monotone and he's like super robotic. And, but I, there was something about that, that I loved. And I love Frank too. Like Frank's just hilarious. Like he's like the comedy guy of our niche, you know? Well, the beauty um, of it is you, everybody has something different that you can learn from. A hundred percent. You know, you know, I pick up little I, things. You, know you, you really hit on it when you say, you know, people that are like-minded, will, you will track them. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. and, and personalities, because there's a million people that are good, but who do you connect with? And, this, uh, do you know this lady, Sunny? Sunny L Lazarda or whatever. Yeah. L L yeah. Yeah. I've been like in the same room with her. She's, she's super talented. She's freaking awesome. Uh, yeah. She's, she's uh, built quite a business. I've, I've taken some good things, watching some of her free She's content. good, man. She's, yeah. she's real good. 
Yeah. She no, knows she, her shit. Definitely. Oh yeah. No, I like her a lot. She's, she's always been just real pure. Like she's just always, and she stayed the course and you know, she's been really good, man. She's really good. Her content on YouTube's great. And she, she's, she's ahead. Of, like she's years ahead of me. Like she was in the game, you know, before me, but, or around the same time, but I got, I, I went into the, what derailed me, uh, is she, she was going into courses and, and all that stuff. And I went into services like agencies and I did marketing stuff like that. Um, cause like when I discovered this online marketing thing, I'm like, Oh my God, businesses could use this. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's when I was like, Oh, like the, these little shops, like these little massage parlors and, 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 and liquor stores and, and, you know, I come from a really small town. So I was like in, in Kansas. So I'm like me talking about online marketing to small businesses in Kansas that are in strip malls. I was talking about things that only people talk about on Pluto. Right. Like I was like from the U I was like from, I was like from back in the future. Like I came in from this like DeLorean from 20 years into the future and was telling them about. So I had this like, I was getting clients like I had an old cheap ass, like hundred dollar suit jacket. And I remember going out door to door with my laptop and I was like, Hey, really can I show you real. Yeah. I was like, can I show, I didn't know. I was like, I need, cause I needed money yesterday. I was like <laughs> robbing from Peter to pay Paul kind of thing. And I was like, I got to make this work. And I couldn't stand having a job. I was like, I'm either going to live in a tent and figure this out or, you know, so I, I was going out and, you know, I figured that I, I just went door to door and I'm like, I'm not coming home until I got a client. And that was kind of the rule each day. And so I just went to every little strip mall, every, I literally got on, on Facebook and I, and I looked up every, I'd go, I'd drive it to a strip mall and I'd look up every business and see if they had a Facebook page. If they didn't, or if they did, and it sucked, I went inside and I said, Hey, can I show you how to make your Facebook page, bring in customers, give me five minutes. And I just showed them on my little computer what to do. Yeah. And, and I, that was it. And I, I just learned as I went and wow. I got, that's Good where I really got my, my chops in the, the whole online thing. And prior to that though, <laughs> you know, I did car sales and then I did, you know, any kind of sailing selling you could think of um phone sales and i really did good in phone sales and then i just transferred that to like online but then i was like i i hated calling leads and all this stuff i'm like man god dang there's got to be you know and then my friend he was like i was so good at call sales he's like dude can you and then i started in a training call centers that were selling like travel packages and mm -hmm. you know home business opportunities and all this shit. And I wasn't even connecting all the dots. I was just like, yeah, I can, I could create scripts that you could follow on the phone and close. I was listening to like, um, uh, 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 uh well, Dan Kennedy, but I was listening to Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, Bob Hell Hopkins, yeah. you know, I was with these guys and I was like doing, I was learning. That's sales. how I started. Yeah. Same and, thing. And Brian Tracy, Zig Brian Ziglar. Tra love those guys. They were like my, I was like, I love you. Like, and I was unlocking to like, and I was listening to Tony Robbins, you know, and I'm like 19 or something. And We're that's what, man. We're exactly that, the same. That's yeah. funny. And I was like, this is the shit right here. And then I, you know, I became a proclaimed, you know, sales guy, I suppose. And then I started, uh, I was like, the phone was the best because I could talk to the most people the fastest, right? Like door to door. I sold, I sold replica high end paintings door to door to doctor's offices. I'd load them up in the back of my work truck that I quit working construction, went and loaded it up with paintings each day that would hurt my fingers to grab them because they had such elaborate frames on them. And I could only grab three in each hand and they were heavy. And I'd walk into... I knew you were my guy. I knew you were my guy. I'd walk into these doctor's offices and lie oh, on the you. wall. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, man. He's like, get that shit out of my office before I get you out of my office. And then some guys would be like, what do you got, buddy? And I just, yep. I sold a couple and I was like, ah, but I hated that. Then I was like, all right, man. And I had a I was doing the same thing, except I was carrying in boxes of meat and seafood. 
10 years door-to-door salesman meeting seafood out of the back of a pickup truck. That's how you learn sales. We built, and- me and my partner, we built, uh, got it to about $12 million a year. Holy shit. Doing that. Uh, we had uh, 10 offices around the country. We had Charlotte, Newport News, Virginia, Nashville, Dallas, Texas, Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, everybody's selling out of the back of a pickup truck, man. And they would fly me into a city. I'd jump on a plane. We would go open a new office. We'd run ads in the paper. I'd be interviewing people all day long, jump in the truck, go them out, show them how to do it. Ten years I did that. Damn. No, that's awesome. <laughs> my, when I was doing the, the – the, when I told, like, my family that's what I was doing, they literally kind of, like, wrote me off as, like, I was psycho. <laughs> and then, like, I I – uh, then my truck started break. My transmission started going out because it was like a '93 Chevy long bed where I could do all my construction shit. And prior, it had to have a rack that I, you know. Anyway, so I, um, I go to this dealership. I didn't even know I had credit. I didn't even know what the hell credit was. <laughs> but I had paid off a vehicle in high school, a cheap, you know, Chevy Blazer in high school, so I had some credit. Well, I didn't know this. I go into the dealership. I'm like. I need to trade my truck in. They're like, well, can you buy anything? I'm like, I, I mean, no, I don't fuck. I have no idea. I hope, you know, I was like, here's what they're like, what's your down payment? I'm like, that truck's paid off. So they pull my credit and they're like showing me all these cars. And I'm like, Oh shit. They're like, yeah, you can get this one. You can get this one. I'm like, what? And so I get this infinity. I'm like, I'm getting a sports car. You know, I'm 19, like just create, you know, I'm hungry for money. You know, I'm just like wanting to be successful. So I buy this G35 and I go from like this pickup driving buffoon to like a badass. Like people are like, nice car. And I'm like, all like, you know, and of course, then the payments started showing up. They were like 500 a month. And I'm like, holy shit. And then I got my apartment. I'm like, okay, now I have to figure this out. And that's when I I was doing like valet with a friend of mine. He owned the valet company. So like I was valeting, making like daily cash, paying that. And then I was like sales and studying and and I started doing call sales. That's when I started making a couple thousand a week. And then I was like teaching call sales. And I was like, ah, it's better to be the teacher. You make more money and you don't have to lift up the phone. <laughs> so then I went from that. And then my buddy's like, dude, you need to start a call center to sell this, this physical product of mine. And he had this old product. I, we started a call center and at 21, I had 35 employees that I hired and trained myself and he was run and he was doing the product side and the delivery side. And we bought a warehouse in downtown Phoenix, right outside of you guys made some money, didn't you? Oh, God damn. When we, when we started that, that business, I got with him, we didn't have an office. He was running pretty remote. His sister was actually just, the, she had a two car garage full of his product and she was getting paid to box it and ship it and the ups would show up to her place so he's like dude we got to you know open this up a little bit more bought a ten thousand square foot office we lived in half of it it was so and then the other half was business and nobody everybody's like what's on the other side of that door i'm like nothing you'd open it up and we had like a shower figured out in there we had it was like our house you know and um but we were freaking slanging, man. I had, I got so good at doing the, it was B2B. We'd sell wholesale to retail and they, they would retail it. And we were setting up accounts. We had like 200 accounts that were paying us 10 to 15 grand a month. And it was like, then here it was like infinity BMWs and just a complete buffoon with my money, like 1500 yep. a night hotels. And Oh my God. Like it was literally like I was, I I basically became a movie star overnight with that thing. And it was like, and I was only getting like 30%. Well, then pretty soon I was like, I was done with all the salespeople. Like it was like, Bob, you can't come in here. Smell like fucking Jack Daniels. I know you're good at the sales. You know, it was like, I was having to do this. Then it was just like, and I kind of of burned myself out really. And it was like, and then I was like, I've got all this money and shit. And I still, I'm not as happy. I thought I was, I was supposed to be like magical, happy or something. And then I learned about the the whole money happiness thing. You got to figure that part out. And I was going through a breakup and like all this stuff. And that's when I met, med- learned meditation and all this shit. And I started going into that world. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to live. I'm going to meditate all day. 
in fuck live in the middle i don't need to live in phoenix anymore I, and so we just i had a, i had about a couple hundred grand that i had somehow fucking managed to save we were just making so much i was just like grab it before it disappears and i stuck it yeah, in my pocket it'll disappear fast one thing oh put it on his money or sing part is and that what they say i should be miles ahead of where i am now if if it weren't been if i would have done right with that money when i was 20 so oh, tell me about it so he goes on a psycho crazy sabbatical because we, we basically went from this like lifestyle to like we shut the thing down and we didn't do tax stuff right so we had that problem to deal with there went a ton of money and then like we had to stop the whole thing and we stop we get out he goes and becomes this artist i go become this monk that still wants a ferrari kind of deal and then i just love cars it's not about the ferrari but it's like i just really loved that but i loved all this stuff i moved back to kansas i meet the woman i'm with now for almost 12 years and um i'm like i want to be able to just live anywhere and and make a million dollars a year that was that was it because it's not as much money as you think it is you know and i'm like and i, and I was like but if i had a business that had it didn't need any employees cuz i i was just like burned from the employee thing and i could just you know run it myself from my laptop i'm like eventually you'll probably get radio or uh, you know internet like you do the radio you know just zoom in from wherever and i'm like that's what i wanted to learn how to build and so i was like how do you do that how do you that's when i started discovering like dan kennedy how to create a mastermind or a coaching program and all this stuff this is back when like dan kennedy was heavy into it right um started buying his stuff and then i ran into all the gurus at that point like it just unlocked i was like holy shit what is this that's that's a real blessing Tom, what year was that about 2005, six, seven, somewhere in there. Oh my God. Yeah. I, well, Facebook so was like, I started, what, what, what really tripped it was we were, we had this call center and every day I'd go in there the night before I'd have to build out the training plan. And then every morning I'd go in there and train my phone guys, get them all pumped and jacked up. Right. And then, you know, I'd be in my office and they'd call me if they needed to close a deal and I'd come get on the phone, that whole deal. And then, um, and I would just sit in my office sometimes and I would make more deals than 35 people on the sales floor just because they were humans that just didn't, I mean, I would literally just take, if you could breathe and read and hold a phone, you were hired, you know, it was like, and then I would, out of that, you just cycle through them. I mean, we hired hundreds of did people. Did you have to do the hiring? Because you I know, that's got, a, I know I, that's got a high turnover, right? You marketing and sales was me. My buddy was the design and the logistical delivery and all that crap. Right. So yeah, I hired, I trained, I fired, I closed, I marketed everything, everything that dealt yeah, with that was my was side. Doing. Yeah. So anyhow, I started discovering, um, I, I was getting into meditation to deal with my, you know, heading to like a depression. It was like, I went from all these different things, like and I was like, how do you go from this much money to no money than to you lose your partner? I was, I was just like going through all this shit and I'm like, and I'm a failure now and like all this stuff. And it was everything. And I, and I like kind of re found myself and I started like, you know, going into that. And I, I created this little book, this little ebook. And I, it just, I just shared in there, like what I was learning about like meditation and stuff. Cause when I discovered it, I thought this was something new. I was like, this is new. Like, everybody needs to know about this. Come to find out Buddha has been talking about this shit for like 5,000 years, right? Yeah, so right. I, I, and I'm like, just learning about this shit. And I'm like, holy God. I'm like, I got to tell everybody about this. Like, you could, I mean, I would be getting a dentist appointment. I'm like, I'm just meditating. I'm like, you, I don't care what you do. I don't even feel it. Like, you know, I'm like, I, it was, I was so, it was like, I had this new opening, right? And so I create this little ebook. It was like 20 something pages and it, I sold it for seven bucks. And I was like, nobody's going to buy this shit. But I was like trying to practice and I wanted something to sell. And I'm like, I don't know what to sell. I was trying to sell like chapstick. I was coming up with anything to try to have a product to sell coming from that world. But I'm living in Kansas now and I'm like driving a semi and I'm doing mechanic work because I knew how to do mechanic stuff because I grew up in Kansas farming. And so I'm like working as a mechanic, driving a semi, meditating, learning business, 
living in a friend's attic that had no electricity outlets upstairs. So I had to run an extension cord up the staircase that his <laughs> grandma gave him. And I got a heater up. There. It's, it was, it was, but it was awesome. I was like, I'm, I'm so happy. And yep. then, um, sold my cars, got a couple repoed because they were $2,500 a month car payments and shit like that. And, um, you know, cause you had to have the V10, you know, all this bullshit. And then like, um, lose all that crap driving a, a Jeep with a dent in the door that we used to just go pick up product from our product supplier. Back in the day, we bought this cheap, cheap ass Jeep. Cause we had to pull a little trailer and it had a ding in the door. So we got it for like 400 bucks. That was my now daily driver, which I was very happy to have. Um, then my grandma was like, you are broke. I'm going to buy you a, a pickup. She buys me this like Ford pickup. And so I'm like, all right, I'm like 23 at this point. And I had went through all these phases of like, wow, that's a lot to go through from 19 to 23. It was literally like a whole nother life that happened in like three or four years. And it was unbelievable. Anyhow, um, I, I, I sold this freaking ebook. I was listening to this guy. I don't even know who the hell he is anymore or who he was. I, I always think about who he, how to find him, but I sold the $7 little ebook and I'm like, holy shit. And it caught, you know, it was an ebook cost me nothing. And I'm like, really? And so, and it was, I was using ClickBank and, and then all of a sudden I got another one and another one. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was like, I didn't want to, I was like, but I don't want to be the meditation guy. You know, it was just like, it was, it was like the, I was just so happy about it because it helped me like get through shit. And I was like, well, I'll be like, I'll be like half, half meditation guy, half, like, I'm going to show people how I, I, the, the moment I would figure something out, like, oh, I figured out how to sell something online. I can teach other people how to do this because I figured out how to do it. That's, that's what happened. Cause that's what sales was. Hey guys, I was listening to Brian Tracy yesterday. He said these things. And if you do this and I, that's how I built my like sales thing. Like it'd be like study, practice, teach, study, practice, teach. And then I'm like, oh, teach a man to fish. Oh, oh. I was like, I'll learn this shit that nobody else wants to learn. I'll spend the time. I'll synthesize it down, package it in a little systems to make it easier for you to sell. Well, come to find out that's what teachers do. So, um, yeah. you know, I'm just completely dumb to everything. Right. And I'm like, wake. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard of this before, you know? And I'm like, oh, I thought I was the only one that knew this shit. I was going to tell the world, you know? Uh, it's just, what do they I, say? It's a, sometimes uh, being naive and ignorant is a blessing, right? It is. And, and it just, that's, that's what happened. And then I started, I hated reading in school, barely made it out. Like C, a B was like run home and tell everybody. Um, and then like, I was just the sports guy, class clown, talk too much, got in trouble for talking too much as you can already. You? Felt. Yeah. Right. And so that was, that was really like, I didn't, and then I learned books and reading and then I just started going crazy with like personal development and reading and all this shit unlocked and like, and then finally, uh, when I met Michelle, her, uh, family owned a flooring store to install flooring. And I, I created them a website and they were paying me, uh, like a couple grand a month to build a website. And I was like able to work from my computer and make more. How did you learn the tech side? Just trial and error? Or just just courses? completely. Yeah. I, I had always been kind of computer. Like I always loved computers. Like when I was a really little kid, I just knew computers were going to be important for some reason. I just, I, I, it just became like, I started on the Apple II, like the little green cursor thing. And then like, it just, every time a new computer came out, it was like, I, I, I had gotten one. You know, and, and instead of like getting like gaming consoles, I just would get a computer. And then I was playing a game on the computer one time as a little kid, and it tried to sell me uh, something. And the moment I seen that, I was like, oh, these computers can do this, huh? And I didn't, <laughs> but I wasn't connecting it. Sure. I was little. I was like a freaking, like I was like a fourth grader or something. Wow. And I was like, I, it just, something happened in me and, but, but, but I grew up, my grandma owned a, my grandma owned her own kitchen store. My mom owned a, her own little business, floral business. My grandpa was a farmer. My uncle owned his own business. So 
going through high school, it was like, just get through the shit so you can start your own. Cause I'm going to go do my own thing. Yeah. It was like, college was like, you're an idiot. Who the hell goes to college? Why would you waste four years when you can just drink now in high school and then treat this like college. And then when you get out, you can just start your own business and start making money right away. Like that was my, like, you know, I'm like, why would you go another four years of school? Like how stupid is that? Right. Cause you only go to school to try to make money that I just, that was dumb. Right. So I didn't know whatever. And that's, you know, how, how it all went. And, um, then I just, yeah, I just started learning over and over again. You know, I look back at some of my videos, man. And I'm like, Holy shit. I'm like in a barn and I'm like, I'm like, cause that was the only place nobody could hear me talking. Cause I was scared to talk on video. And I was like, man, I can't let anybody hear me. They'll think I'm fucking crazy, you know? And I'm like, I'd, I'd have to sit by the window right when the sun was coming up. So I had light in there because the barn didn't have light. And I'm like sitting out there. I'm like, so you can do this, you know? And I'm like talking to myself. And I thought I was crazy at this point too. I'm like, Jesus, man, you have done lost your fuck. You have lost it. Dude. Like now you're talking to your camera now? by yourself thinking that people are going to actually listen to this shit. And I just was like, but what else am I going to do? I can't keep, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to keep driving this truck, you know? And How like, long, Mike, did you feel like it took you? Obviously, when everybody starts on video. <laughs> As he says that the video breaks. Classic. You know what it is? I know what's happening with his system. I'm assuming I could be completely wrong. But if you have a bunch of shit going into your computer, it can't, it'll it's tossing around power to these different outlets. And as soon as it gets too much, it'll just stop because it does it to me all the time. But no. we lost Robert anyway. So Bill, yeah. So the, are you going to leave your personal story on this recorded message? Or are you going to edit it off? Oh no, this is recorded. It'll go for sure. Okay. That's cool. I hope so. I, I mean, Absolutely. I it's a great thing to, for people to hear. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it's, I, it, it's it's came out in several different things a lot of people are like man why don't you just put it on your website or something like that i'm like well i probably should i don't know but um it's just something that comes out over over time i mean i'll just i mean this is what i'll do tell you know this is this is me this is what i do um yeah I mean, it'll probably, who knows where this all goes. You know, it's like, I just know I'll be doing this stuff. You know, I may right. in, invest in some like properties or something, you know, like different things like that. But I mean, this is the core thing for me. I just love it, man. It's like, it's magical once it unlocks. Like once you, once you, once you start seeing the, once you start seeing the patterns, and you, and and you, it's like anything that you do, right? Um, you, you do it long enough and you start seeing the nuance, like you see the, the, the skeleton and the muscles and the fluids and like you, you see how it works together in concert. And then you have to figure out how to make that a consistency, you know? And like, like when I think about this whole thing now, I just think about like, okay, find a problem figure out how to solve the problem and then go tell people about it, show them how to get it and then make sure that they get it. And it's like, it, it gets that simple. It's like traffic conversion, delivery, traffic conversion, delivery, you know, and it just becomes those three things to me, but all right, Robert, <laughs> you, what, let me ask you a question real quick, Robert, what is your computer that keeps breaking down and doing this thing? I know it's not your computer. I get it. But like, I have the same thing that happened. I can't hear you. We need your audio on, buddy. Yeah, I'm getting a new computer today. Yeah, no, it, it what happens is I've got the same thing. I went out and bought one of those USB because with the Mac, you know, you, you just got to plug a lightning cable into it and then it has a dongle with all these like things you plug into it. If you have the wrong one, it'll just like it'll suck. It'll do that. Cause it's trying to choose power to go to here. And if it stops it at all, it like the connection will kill. And I love it when I'm doing a, a presentation and I'm recording it 
and I finally nail it and I'm like yeah the whole video and it's like god damn it like anyway My, mine's definitely the computer I've already uh, got an appointment this afternoon going to get a new one yeah just get it just get my thing with computers now is like just go buy a MacBook Pro spend the money on it my freaking MacBook Pro I mean the last one I had before this one that thing lasted like almost 10 years oh yeah you can't beat it no they're a tank but anyway you were saying something um let me think what i was saying before i got really something about like how how long it took me to get oh yeah 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 the video the video part yeah so we all suck uh i think most everybody uh sucks when they first start doing videos right you're in the barn you're trying to figure it out what what, what do you think your time frame was before you're like okay i'm pretty good at this i think i'm comfortable I, i've gone back i've looked at my videos i could see my progress you know now i'm i'm not as you know dumb looking as i was when i first started and what was that time frame like for you um i would you know it the thing that i always had on my side is i was a talker and i can i was like a, a storyteller and like that was my significance growing up was i could make people laugh and captivate them and talk and i could be the class clown that was like my superpower right i would Right. anything i and i got in so much trouble because i was so ornery and like nothing bad you know i didn't do anything bad i just you know was mischief i was like mischievous you know um like a little kid that's like why did you draw on the wall you know like that kind of shit and so i was always having to get myself out of trouble <laughs> verbally i was like always trying to so i just got good at it and then you know as a salesperson you get pretty slick but I just kept doing it and probably like, I would say, I mean, it took, I, I it's, it's hard to say because I just, once I started doing it, I, I didn't, you know, I still feel like I'm an idiot on camera sometimes. Now I just don't care though. It's like, I went from <laughs> like, now I just, I'm like, as long as they get the information, you know, and I mean, I still feel like a moron on video. Like, I still think, like, I look at my videos from, like, just a couple weeks ago or my TikToks. I'm like, you freaking buffoon. But I just don't even care about it anymore because I'm like, as long as I'm talking about, you know, something that's going to help them, you know, th then I don't really care. But I don't know, man. I, it takes, I bet it took, shit, I bet it took a thousand videos before I could even say that i can like i don't know i th this is here's here's how i look at it in the beginning you have to just go that's why i feel like going live is so good you'll get your talk down real quick um doing a video every day on YouTube and stuff. It's not because Gary V said to, or, or it's going to bring you all this stuff. Although it does bring you traffic. It does get you attention. Even one new person, person watching your video a day matters at the end. It really does. Like it, it compounds and it really does matter. Um, so for me, like in the beginning, I feel like your first year, you need to right away when you start a YouTube channel, you need to figure out how to get a hundred videos on YouTube as quickly as humanly possible. If they suck, if what, you know, many YouTube channels I've started with hundreds of videos on them and then shut them off and, and got rid of them and never looked at them ever again. They're still out there. Like I have like thousands upon thousands of videos that I worked so hard on spent so much time on and nobody will ever see them again. Um, I've spent on VSL videos, I've spent a month creating a VSL video and wow. nobody, nobody will ever see it. I, wow. I, I've, I've spent, oh my gosh, so many, so many hours just creating videos. I, I think now the, the biggest thing is know exactly who you're talking to to a point where you basically 
find a picture of them in a magazine or something that would be your perfect audience or whatever and you clip them out and tape it to the bottom of your camera and you just pretend that you're talking to that little person right there and you just talk to one person you look into the eye of the camera and you talk through the camera and you don't care about what anybody thinks you just make sure that whatever you are talking about is going to give them some sort of like answer because that's what people are looking for is answers the only reason Google and YouTube are the hottest thing on the planet and now chat GPT is because they're these little machines that give you answers. Exactly. So exactly. be, be that like everybody's like AI is going to take your job. AI will not beat the guy that knows how to use AI. Right. If you know how to I've use it. Spending uh, some amount of my hours every, every week learning. I've gotten hooked up with this guy. He's a, uh, he's, looks young i don't know how old he is but he is uh he is i guess you would call it the new um prompt engineer right that's a whole new business category right being oh, yeah. a prompt engineer because it's all about how do you ask the question how do you frame the question all has to do with the output that you get based on the input in right we all know that and, um, you know, that's so helpful having somebody that says, hey, try this. If you're looking to get this information, frame your question this way and do this. I mean, things that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily think about. And that's been super helpful, right? The way I use chat GPT is I just treat it like it's the I, basically like it's God and I can ask it anything and it'll tell me. I just pretend that I have this little little friend that that's with me at all times. And I just talk to it like I'm talking to like, like I'm talking to you right now, I'd be like, I'd be like, Robert, if I had this, 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 and this, and I wanted this to happen, what would I do? I just treat it like I'm talking exactly to a human. And the more, like they always say, questions are the answers and the better their question, the better the answer. I just realized that the more detailed and the more descriptive and the more clear I make my question to it, the better the answer is that I get in return. And then wow. once I get an answer in return, I then think about like, based off what it gives me i'm like how how, how would what can i what can, can i can you shorten this for me like does it have to be this long or like is there a better way to say this i literally talked to it like that like michelle came was in, in a five hour conversation saturday nonstop. oh, oh five yeah five hours yeah and and i'll tell you what it it um i like to combine these tools together like play one off of the other but in chat in uh in chapter in pillar nine, my last pillar inside of the Build Lab program, um, I uh, first I took a program to learn about Chat GPT, and yeah. then I uh, through that found another program that uh, I've got five hundred plus online business and online marketing prompts that I'm going to be giving you guys, and that's awesome. It's fantastic, man. And I, I, I'm using it to to build my digital online course. Mm -hmm. That's that's what, what you're probably thinking. Well, how in the hell are you in a five hour conversation? Oh no, it's easy. I mean, I'm going. I'm asking it this, I'm asking it that. It's giving me output. I'm refining it, going back and forth. I'm copying it. I'm pasting it into Google Docs. I'm building the framework of the course. Then I go on back. And, you know, I just keep getting more granular, right? I start with yep. an outline, then I go to modules, then I go to class lessons. That's how I'm doing it. I don't know. If <laughs> and then you put your own spin into it, right? You, yes. That's the key, you know, and it's like, that's, that's it, man. I mean, this is the, it's like, this is the future. So either you accept that or you, you know, it's like, can you imagine the guy that, you know, he just couldn't give up the horse, you know, he's like. Yeah, you no, know, guys. The horse is the way. Well, you know, like to me, no, know, knowing myself and and where my strengths, as well, most importantly, where my weaknesses are. Like, like you, I've been in sales my whole life. You have something that I don't think I unfortunately have in my DNA. You have a very creative side to you, right? You have that artistic left brain, artsy fartsy. I wish I had yeah. it, but I don't. I'm an engineer. I'm very logical. I'm very pragmatic. And I can craft messages and I can sell them, but I don't have that. And that was one of the, the hurdles and impediences I had getting into this business. But when AI came along, I was like, holy shit, they can help me with my weakness on the content creation. 
hundred percent. That's, I, that's, that's when I was like, okay, now I've got somebody that can help me with my weakness and give me the content, write the prompts, write the hooks, write the storyline, write the offers. I can deliver that message. I'm just not good at creating. Mm -hmm. I'm not an ad copy guy. It's just not. Yeah, no, I, I had just such a, I had, I have like extreme ADD, right? Like I know people talk about ADD and shit like that. And people think I got that two children with it. people think that it's not a real thing. Oh, and, then, trust and, me. and then people hang out with me and they're like, you're fucked up. <laughs> they're like, we've been in 13 different conversations in the, in the, in this one conversation. And uh, my son and my daughter, both, I live with it. And they're like, and if you're, <laughs> if you're an engineer type, so, and then here's what's crazy. I grew up, my grandpa was a blacksmith and a welder. So I learned how to do, I had to be very engineer because we were like repairing tractors and frames and mechanics. And I really liked mechanics, but then I also liked art because I loved, I grew up watching Bob Ross and I just loved that shit. And so yeah. I was like, I had all these things. And then I was like a, a talkative class clownish type and I loved sports. So I had this like strange mixture of of like characteristics about me which makes you know a business like this for me very ha like i'm so happy when i'm building products and programs and then when i get to deliver them and then when i get to do the math part it's like but i get it man and that chat gpt levels the playing field being able to have both that 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 skill set on the left and the I'm right i'm still brain. stronger on one than the other like i'm 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 weaker on my engineering side as a whole than I am on the creative side. Like, you know, I can come up with ideas all, I can look at something. I read this book by, um, he was, uh, he's still awesome, but he, he, he did like 150 million in digital product sales. Wow. Um, <laughs> Eben Pagan, Eben, have you guys heard of Eben Pagan? No. Oh my God. This guy, you would love him by the way, if you're in, but this Eben guy, Pagan. Eben Pagan. Yeah. Um, he, he, he's an old school gangster, but he's new school. Like he's, 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 uh, he's awesome. Like anybody like Frank, anybody, uh, you, you take like even Tony Robbins, all these guys, these guys know this guy. Like he is a secret little gangster in the background. And he, he created a book about how to be more, um, like inventive and creative. And he goes every day, get into the practice of like, how could I create a product by combining two weird things together? Like, what could I do to get this to become one product? And, and he's like, every day, just take a practice of like combining a couple things and thinking of how you can turn it into something. And I don't know, I just picked it, it like kind of picked up in me. And so now when I see stuff, I'm like, this is good. And this is good. How can I bring these together and take the some goodness of these both and create something more simplified, more efficient, and yet deliver on both of these things. And that's where my course stuff came together. And it's been, it's been extremely helpful, but I will tell you one thing that really helped me in the beginning that I, I just urge you guys to be cautious of, at least for my brain, it's very dangerous if I do this, which is I, and I've still, I, I deal to this, I deal with this to this freaking day is I can't go, I can't, it's like guru overload, right? I cannot start listening to all these people because they're all great in their own right. They all have these different things, but I get so spun out. I'm like, just like, I, like, I'm just, I don't even know how to do my own thing. I'm so and I think the world's crashing because they're like, if you're not doing this, then you've got three months to live. You know, it's like all this shit. And I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. I got to get back to like first principles. I have to shut that shit up. And Michelle will tell me, she's like, you've been, you've been watching too much, man. You got to chill. Well, you know what, you know, what really is our worst enemy in that regard? Cause I agree hundred percent is the, the technology that we're using on social media because of the algorithms. Once you look at one of those types of things, that's all you see in your feed, right? Yep. So if you're, you're scrolling and scrolling, guess what? It's just like coming at you. Like and you could be that 
in that way, remember, that's why one view is really powerful. Because you start showing up in the person's feed. And it's that's why you posting each day and like giving yourself, you know, just, you know, I have trouble coming like the like that guy. I couldn't even think of his name. He's done 150 million in product sales online. I couldn't even think of his name. <laughs> like you think you're going to go out there and like, like I can't even remember <clears throat> most of the stuff they said, you know, it's like, so don't worry about that. You know, just you've got to, it's like, it's like practicing anything like football, golf, anything. If you're not the person that's doing it and practicing it more is going to excel and get there quicker than the person that's doing it every once in a while. And so that's yeah. how I think about this whole video thing, because it is the core way to deliver information, right? I mean, society and, and life has proven this. You um, know, the guys over at uh, Think Media? Oh, yeah. Sean? Yeah, they're good. Sean Canal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I found him like a year ago, and like he was one of the people that, you know, helped me with my, my light bulb moment that this was the direction I wanted to go. So... Uh, really started, you know, and I got an unlimited amount of content that's free out there that you can watch. And then I rolled oh, yeah. one of his lowering classes just to, to help me on that side of it, right on the video piece. And then I was looking for what you're providing right on your side. And the two, I think are going to get me there, but you're hundred percent right. I try not to, and I had shiny object syndrome like crazy and you help me with that. I'm just got to stay focused. And, and some of the things I pick up when I go on social media are helpful, but that's not all I want to see, right? Sometimes I just want to see other things. But my God, once you look at one or two of those videos, that's all they're going to send you, man. That's or, all they're going to send you. Or you're going through five courses at once. That's the worst thing that you can do. You yeah, need to no, find no, one no. course. Yeah. You need to find <laughs> one course and you need to stick it all the way out until you get it. Because when I had been going, I mean, I I had all the the courses, man. I mean, and then I found Sam. And it was like, I just shut everything off. I shut off social media. I shut off every other course. And I was like, I am going to complete, I'm going to right or wrong. I'm either going to, I don't care. I'm going to complete this all the way through. And then I'm going to go through it again. And I was like, I will go through that program 10 times. And it was a big program. Like it was big and in depth, like just, it was like, it was insane. Right. It was very, very, I mean, he's a, essentially he's like a software engineer now, you know, kind of deal. Like he's very like, you know, just meticulous, like just documents and shit. It was like, so not really my si sort of style, but it, I needed it because it was, there wasn't a bunch of flash in it. I needed something that, cause too much flash. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm like, so I had to, I went through that and I stayed in that. And that's when the shit opened for me. You, you, and, and I'll tell you this now, whether you can assume it, or you can uh, you know predict it or whatever all of us there's only one way to really play basketball you have to dribble you have to shoot and pass and then you play defense those are the first principles of basketball yeah the first principles of online marketing you are going to learn inside of build lab and you are going to learn it i do it this is all i do I survive our family and we do well, right? Like I just am going to transmute that to you. So I may not be the best at this, but what I will tell you is you will learn this here and then you can, now I can go look at the different gurus and I still have to be careful, mind you. Right. Because it's like, you know, everybody calls it a VSL funnel or I call it an offer amplifier video or whatever, but that's just because of my like m m creative mind. But it's like, we're all saying sales video and you can get so like tangled up in these stupid things that mean nothing. And if once you learn the first principles of this, then I can go listen to all those gurus and I can, I I'm like, it doesn't confuse me anymore. But mm -hmm. they're so goddamn good at what they do. Like, you get somebody really good at online marketing and online business, they will get you. They are good. Like, we have learned to be persuasive. We have learned the mechanics of the human brain because we have to. And it's like, even you don't even know you're doing it most of the time. 
and right. it's like they will get you we are subject to this kind of like <laughs> like we are like we can't defend ourselves against it right it's like it's like a man you know you it's like a man and a woman you put a naked beautiful man in front of a woman or vice versa they're it, it because you're you're powerless to it like it, it's it's we're designed this way right it's like down to the atomic like positive negative shit right so that's why sales works it's we're exactly it's up as human beings if you do these things a high percentage of the time you're going to have a predictable outcome if you follow the frameworks of copywriting if you follow these frameworks even if you suck at it and you got a booger hanging out of your nose and you're th you know your audio sounds like this and we're throwing you're it's still going to work like with enough volume it will work and so i just urge you to you know whoever it may be pick that person okay and stay true to that until you until it unlocks and i don't need to tell you when it will or how you'll know you'll know it will open for you, you you'll you'll be like oh okay i get it it's like when you learn the the fake pass, you're like, oh, and then you throw it over here. It's like once you get that, you you got it. It's like the bike thing. It just opens up for you. You're like, oh, I feel this now. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, and and then then you'll just start perfecting your balance, right? And 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 you'll be a little bit more. You know, you can, and then you start to. You start to become yourself in it. Yeah. And, and, but you still, like, I'm telling you, you guys, it's, it, you have to be careful. You have to keep it simple. Um, and, and the, the biggest thing in this whole thing, I feel like is you have to master the mundane and be consistent with it. Okay. It will, it will, it will work if you're just consistent and you just realize that this is at the end of it it's kind of a boring thing, right? Like you're, you're doing marketing each day. You're saying the same exact shit you said yesterday. You're just wearing a different shirt and you're talking about it in a different perspective and you learn to have fun with it. Right. Um, and then you also like, as you're going through it, realize how important it is to help the other person feel understood and to paint the picture for them. Mm -hmm. And these things are like the nuances and they come as you, as you, and you, you're, you're constantly perfecting that message. Like, and it's hard. It takes a long time, that part, but you can still survive with nice income prior to you getting real good with your nuances, you know, and right. in, in your, in your video skills and stuff like that. The biggest thing with video is audio and light. That's like, of all things, have light in your face, in your face, and then have a, a decent microphone. Outside of that, it could be black and white, uh, you know, grainy. As long as it, my microphone is it working okay? Is it yeah, cool? I mean it's 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 good. It's a little, it's a little roomy, a little roomy, but not. I mean, you could easily use it. It's, and that's the other thing. It's like. You can get so. Listen, I have spent. God only You're knows. Born I don't. <laughs> it. It's. A, it's. It's almost like. Ridiculous! How much time I've spent like, trying to make the perfect video or getting the right camera and all this shit, and it's like. A, a good smartphone. Buy a good microphone. I think Sure makes the best like, mics for us, creator type. This. This microphone right here, it's like, I don't know, like 300 bucks or something, but the sh or 200 and maybe it's even less now, but the sure it's like a MB seven or whatever. It's, it's a USB plug-in so you can plug it into anything. This is, I mean, this mic sounds good. It like, does sound good. It sounds very good. Very clean. It, it is a, an incredible microphone and like, it's so directional, like, even just talking like this, look how much of a difference. It doesn't even pick it up right. But as I start talking, it's like very, it's for, I mean, it's, it's perfect. There's another one that's like, you know, the, the black one that you see that like first came out, that thing's expensive and it's unnecessary. And frankly, this one's better because it has that USB plug in. You can plug your little 
headphones into what's, it so you can what's the boom on attached to on the other uh, end? this is just a, a like a friction arm i'll show you exactly what i got here hey mike i got a jet yeah brother all right man it's been it's been real i appreciate all the advice yeah man and i'm excited i'm excited to keep working with you i see you in there man like just uh this new program just give it a shot i think you're i think you're gonna really find a lot in inside of it that's gonna help you because I'm literally talking to the person that is literally in your shoes uh -huh. and trying to get this thing figured out. And that's what, that's the goal here. So. Okay, cool. All right, my man. All right. Good awesome. luck. Have a good day guys. All right. Take care. See you later. So, um, yeah, the, the, the boom that I use, and then I got to get out of here too. Um, let's see here. Yeah, this is a good setup. I'll show you. I love it. It's been, it finally settled in on something. Um, the iPhone though, the iPhone 14, like it's so hard to beat that thing with, because you can shoot 4k on it at 24 or 30 frames. It's got an amazing processor in it and I can just share it to my computer. It's got depth of field. You don't have to, Fuck around with all these settings on these cameras. I don't have to put a chip in anything. It's so good, man. Like it's hard to beat. They have made it. I've tried to beat it, and it's like, yeah, you can get gnarly with these lenses, but it's unnecessary. Like, um, okay. So let me hear this. Is the easiest way to do it. So. This is the mic right here. The sure mic. Such look at that. 4400 ratings at five stars. Like it's just a phenomenal mic. It's so good. I'm gonna get another one actually for traveling. Um whoops. Okay. All right. So that's the mic. And then the arm that I've got for it is like this one here. This is the, this is like, I mean, it's only a hundred bucks or something, but um, you can find them cheaper than this, but you, you basically get one of these arms like this that just clip onto the table. Okay. That's and, what I was looking for. I was, yeah. How much of an edge do you need? Like a quarter of an inch, half an um, inch? So it'll, it'll take up to like, like it'll tell you here, let's see, connecting post. Like how thick is your desk? Like I've got a um, an overhang, right? Uh, it's a like a countertop, right? It's a marble or something. I don't know what it is. Oh, so does it like go in a little bit and then it like tucks in behind it? Just sits on top of my desk, and then it it's you know it's got maybe I don't know a half an inch overhang. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that that half an inch might be kind of weird because it's you know this is a flat to flat, so if it if it it might cause it to like, you know, that clip down here, this part. Yeah. If it's not, uh, yeah. See how this hooks. Uh huh. Now, if you got one that was deeper that where that screw could go behind that lip and just get into there to clamp down, or you could just get a little block of wood and match it up to that, that lip so that it's all level right there and it's not dipped. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to have a flip camera. I can't do it. You know, as long as it wasn't, it's just got to be level. The, the top and bottom have to be an even surface or it will it won't clamp right or hook right. But I'll tell you what else you can get, and I have one of these too, is, uh, and I honestly like this one. I use it a lot. Uh Is like one of these. I actually got this one, I think, because it has a boom. I can kind of adjust it. See how it just sits on the desk. Uh, okay. Those and they're heavy. Like it, it, it ain't that, gonna fall that would over. Probably right. work better in my situation than the. Clamp and it's more it. movable. Like yeah. if you want to go set somewhere else and have that same quality. Well, I, when you're not using it, it's easy. You just push it over to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I just. Before I had gotten one of these, I had gotten one of these other ones, you know, and, and used that. But like, like some, just make sure whichever one you decide to get, 
the key with with these ones is make sure it's got a really heavy at this is actually the exact one that i have and that okay. base the base on these things are pretty heavy you want to make sure it's got a heavy base right right um but yeah no just you know get get something like that but the static arm is nice you know um but Honestly, this, uh, yeah, the Malky or something, whatever. I think this is exactly what I got. Yeah, th this is, where the hell is it? I got it. What I like about this one is when I travel, I that base just screws off real quick and it lays flat. And then I can take this part of the arm oh, and yeah. lay it and it sets right in my, I can take it in my little laptop bag and wherever I go, you know, and it's got this threaded thing here because the, the mic that I have, you know, this mic has like a heavy thread on it. You know, it's it's not like a a little thread. It's got to have the big the it, it comes with it. So, um, but yeah, it's it's good. This is probably the way to go right here. This Malky boom stand with the get the one that's got this little and this this part here raises up and down too. See, and then okay, you've got the, yeah yeah. I think that yeah be good that, that that I think is gonna work a lot better in my environment than the clip on. Yeah, no, it 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 really does probably because. Because this one, like I said, it's got to have, if it doesn't have a, you know, if the bottom isn't, uh, you see how it clamps there. If it's not even on the bottom, then it'll be, it'll be crazy. But no, th those, those things work great. And then getting you a good, a good light, you know, I've got a big circle light over here on my right, you know, one of these, uh, I was wondering if I needed one because this room I'm in is pretty well lit. I don't know if you have any feedback on that. I mean, your lighting's always been fantastic from my perspective, but like, okay, um, yeah, I just I have well, one of these. I got some good lighting in here. Yeah, no, your lighting's always been great. Um, but I, uh, I am gonna get a new light at some point, and I've had this one here forever, and it's obviously it works fine. Um, I mean, this thing can get pretty, pretty crazy, you know. Uh, I don't even use the power of it, but the, if I were to get a new one, I would get, uh, what do they call it? A key light for video. I would get, uh, like one of these that have more of a soft, like, I think the best one is by. It gets kind of pricey, but like one of these are really great. I just don't like how big and how much room this shit takes up. Right. That's but the, these lights are probably the best though, that have this like big thing on the back. Um, if I had just like a stationed out place, I would do that. But the, the, the key light that I would get is the one that has a built in, um, Michelle got one of these and it's kind of like this and it's got that built in, um, it's got a built-in soft box look to it. Like it's it, it a diffuser. There we go. Right. Um, if it has a built-in diffuser on it, it's hers. Just, it seems to like really help you glow better. But outside of that, you know, light, light and mic is, yeah, like this thing would be great. Like this little, you know, it's got like a soft, soft light kind of thing. Um, the key light. Works great, but hey, man, I'm gonna need to. You go grab a sandwich. I gotta go let the dog out. Yep, sounds good, man. Well, listen, um, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to start dropping everything out, and uh, yeah, man, I'm gonna crush it. It's just uh, getting it all together. I'm I'm staying with the plan. Yeah. Right. Yep. All right, brother. Well, you have a great right, day. Thanks, thanks for lot, chatting man. with me, and uh, I'll see you I around the next it. corner. Thanks for sharing uh, your uh, your life story. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it goes a little longer than it should, but anyhow. All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, man. Take care. Catch you later. Bye.